right. What's going on, guys? Getting the chat up going so I can read it better. How am I? I'm doing good, Dominique. Again, so until this chat comes back up, I can see some of you guys, but it goes so quick that it's hard to respond. That was one of the things I was doing when I was testing earlier. Everyone can hear me though? Sounds good? Does that sound good? Someone say yes, sound good? Evie, love you too. How am I doing today? Oh man, look at these pop-up things. I don't even understand this stuff. I'm doing good. Okay, you can hear me. Thank you. Yes. All right, I'm just getting this... Man, okay, so it's going to do this thing again where the chat doesn't pop up right away. So I'm going to respond to the phone until the online one comes up. I don't know what takes... I guess it must take a certain amount of people for... I don't even know. All right. The blue Batman is awesome. I know, right? So I've got... I've got the Batman and I've got Darth Vader. Uh, and the funny story about the Batman is... I've been looking, so I bought the Darth Vader at uh, Target, like, right when they came out, and they only did a, not a limited edition, but they did a small amount of them, and uh, I bought one, and I was like, they're kind of expensive, but I was like, I have to have it. They had a Stormtrooper too, and I was like, I'll come back for the Stormtrooper, I'll think about it, because, again, they're kind of pricey. Well, when I went back, like, a week later, they're all sold out everywhere, all from everywhere, um, and the Batman I had never seen, and I found online on eBay the Batman for, like, half price, and I was all excited, and I was like, oh my god, I have to buy it. So I bought it instantly, and what I didn't realize is the shipping was like 10 times the amount of what I would have paid for paying full price on somewhere else. And uh, yeah, so that Batman cost me way more than it should. And then I also here, I'm going to get out so I can zoom in all my pops, if you can see in the background. At least half of those, well, I don't know about half, but at least a whole row, maybe more, are from fans. Um, I'm trying to think. Different ones. Um, someone gave me the Daryl bottom right for sure. Uh, there it is. Cause my cat's Daryl. Uh, I got the uh, I got the Team Wolf one from a fan. I got the Princess Jasmine one from a fan. <laughs> That's an interesting story. But um, all right, as everyone's loading in. All right, guys. So I'm just testing this out. I'm not being paid by Live Me, so please do not spend money. Do not send me anything. Um, I don't even know how this stuff works. There's like magic wands and hearts and crazy stuff going on. Please do not spend any money. This is I'm just testing out. Uh, live streaming services like this or Twitch. You just, someone just sent me a magic wand. Don't do that. Save your money. I appreciate it though. Um, yeah, I'm just testing out streaming. It's also a way to interact with you guys. It's been a minute. You know, I see some of you guys at conventions, but also I don't, you know, uh, there's a lot of fans that follow me that don't ever get to meet me and live streaming is a super way, a super cool way for you guys to see me, uh, ask questions. Um, I don't know, maybe get to see the side of me that isn't Parrish, or if you guys are Team Wolf fans, you know, I'm, I'm Ryan Kelly, the actor, is nothing like Deputy Parrish, the supernatural deputy. So, for people who haven't necessarily seen me, this is a cool way to interact. Baby, can you say hi to me? Hi. I wanted to see that. Ah, see? It's too fast. You guys are chat. I need this chat to come up. Hold on. Let me get this chat online going. Um, and then, so hopefully I can get, I can respond to you guys a lot easier. Um, I don't know why this is doing this. It did this last time where... Let's see. Um, hmm. Well, until the chat comes up... I don't, is anyone on... Oh man, this is terrible because the questions are... It's, 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 it the, so on my phone, it's so little. So this is what I was testing earlier. And I got the page up. So I have the page where my chat is. Once it loads up, I will be able to see on my computer um, your guys' responses. Because right now I see, like, why aren't you coming to Switzerland? I don't know. I wasn't invited. Why aren't I coming to Switzerland? I would love to come to Switzerland. When is Switzerland? What the heck? Uh, you can scroll to see the previous comments. Yeah, on my phone, but the problem is it can't, it's, like, it's teeny, so it's, it goes by so quick. Um, something I just saw tattoo screen by. Uh, what tattoo was that? Which one? Is that the Be Confident? Uh... Is there something you can tell us about your role in NCIS Los Angeles? See, okay, so I can... Let's get this chat going. Uh, so I just did that. It was something right around the holidays. Um, in the acting world, I mean, the holidays, like Thanksgiving and Christmas, are dead. Uh, the industry shuts down. There's not much going on. So I, I 
got lucky and, and, and did a little teeny little guest spot on NCIS LA, a show that I really love. I love LL Cool J and Chris O'Donnell. They're amazing. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, you, you'll, it's, I'm sure it, it airs fairly soon because shows like that have such a high turnaround. Um, but don't expect anything too crazy. It was just a little fun thing I was doing during the holidays. Your internet is as bad as mine. My internet's bad. Are you sure? My internet should be good. I really I pay for good internet. It's like the one thing because I play a lot of video games, so I love um, I love fast internet. All right, you guys are ch ch chatting. I just stuttered there. You guys are ch 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 chatting so quick that I can't read the responses. I need this to get up and going. We had this problem last time, but it took like ten minutes. So hopefully, in like ten minutes, the chat will come up and I'll be able to see on my computer here. Ready? So I'll kind of show you guys. So I have my computer both my computers like that and that's what I have I was hoping to be able to stream on my computer like with my webcam like a like a like a actual streaming service but for some reason I couldn't figure it out uh, so it's on my phone right now uh, but it's still connected to a uh, hardline internet so it should be so my internet should be good for you guys I apologize if it's not my eyes are beautiful thank you the light helps a lot I've got a streaming light so like Lighting, camera, you know, you guys, Instagram filters and all that stuff. It definitely helps. Good lighting always makes people people look look better. You know, if you guys saw me in the morning without all this makeup that I had on, I, you'd be like, ugh. Did you see, ah, oh, see, it's just scrolling too fast. Something about a drawing. The toys in your background. Yeah, I got, I got tons of toys in the background. I'm still waiting for the chat to come up. So last time it took a, it took a hot minute for it to load. So I'm hoping it doesn't take as long. And I'll be able to answer your guys' questions a lot better. Um, okay, here we go. I got it up, I think. Is this it? Yes. Awesome. Okay, I got the chat going. All right, so it says, Hush, you look great no matter... Okay, I'm good. Thank you, Sandra. Okay, the chat's going good. I, okay, I can see all these things. So it says, uh, Gustavo, Ryan, I love you. Man, this is... Okay, cool. All right, we got it working. This is good. This is good. I'm going to start answering some of your questions. You guys, okay, so now that we've got more people joining, um, I want to clarify. I'm just doing this as a test. This is not paid. I'm not being paid to do this, so please don't spend any money sending me anything. I'm not going to – It's please, just save your money. This is just a way – I'm testing streaming, something I'm interested in. Um, I also want to be able to connect with you guys. I see a lot of you at conventions, but some of you guys don't ever get to see me or meet me or know anything about me besides what you saw on Teen Wolf or other projects that I've done. Um, Brazil loves you. How many pop vinyls do I own? Uh, from Nightshade. Okay, so in the background. Okay, I see. Um, I own a bunch, and I have a bunch more. But like I was saying earlier, a lot of fans gave me a couple ones. Like if you can see in the bottom, uh, the whole row in the bottom is pretty much ones that fans have given me for for different random reasons. I own a bunch, and I have a I have a in my bedroom. Uh, in my bedroom, I have a bunch more, and I got my two. I need to get the stormtrooper, but I'm a I'm a big nerd. I love video games. I like I like collecting cool things. Um, I don't know. I just I just I, I don't know. I guess I'm a I'm a, I'm <laughs> just a big kid and I'll never grow up. Uh, but that's good, right? You know, never growing up is it's fun. Uh, hi from Raleigh, North Carolina. Hi, how's it going, Miranda? I think you have like 50. I think I have more than 50 uh, nightshade, but because I, I have a bunch uh, in my bedroom as well. Um, you like, so Victor, what's TWD? Teen, do I like TWD? What is that? Uh, okay, so let's chat. Would I ever come to a London con? Uh, yeah, I would. I would love, I've been to a London convention. Um, I love going to all conventions. The problem is, you guys always ask, like, why don't we go to this or this? Uh, or would we like to go to this? I would go anywhere. Are you kidding me? Like, I, there hasn't been, there's not, I've never experienced one convention in, in as many as I've done that I've not liked, I've not had fun at. Um, but that's also because I'm meeting fans and you guys are, you know, the most important part about conventions and you guys make it amazing. Getting to interact with you guys and hear what you guys think um, is awesome, you know, the good and the bad. Um, so I would go to a convention anywhere. Uh, the problem is there's, it's a business and it's organized by certain people and it takes a lot of collaboration and a lot of timing. Um, so I just have to be invited. And also there's a lot of other shows that people do and there's also a lot of other actors on Team Wolf. So sometimes it just... You know, sometimes people are like, why didn't you come to, I don't know, I'm just going to Egypt. I'm like, I didn't know about it. I would have loved to go to Egypt, but I didn't know. No one told me. All right, let's scroll. Man, you guys, this is awesome. There's a boatload of you in here. You guys um, say, te amo to Brazil. Te amo to Brazil. Uh, 
Send a honey pot. Thank you for Sam. Guys, please don't send me anything. Don't spend any money on this. This is just me testing. I'm not being paid. I appreciate it, but I want you guys just to hear and ask me questions, hang out, chat, have fun. I'm going to try to get to all your questions. It's uh, You guys are spamming pretty good. If I could live anywhere, where would I live? So I'm from Chicago. Uh, life life Fucci. I'm from Chicago. If I could live anywhere, I'd, I'd live at home with my family. Um, I live in Los Angeles. My family, I have a large family, 14 brothers and sisters. And they all live in um, in Chicago. So if I could live anywhere, I'd, I'd go there. But thankfully, because of Teen Wolf, I've traveled a lot. And some of my favorite cities, man, they're, everything's too different. Like some places I like the food better. Some places the the buildings are just stunning. There's places that are, you know, higher paced, fat, more action. There's places that are smaller, quieter. Everything uh, has its pros and cons. And um, And I love traveling, but I'm also a person that like, a vacation for me is too long if it's seven or seven or more days. I like like three to four day vacations, and then I like going back home. Like I like I like being home. I like I have as a lot of you guys know I have cats, dogs, uh, turtles, uh, and I just I just like being home. I, it's comfortable. I have my home. I have all my my toys. I have my things that I'm comfortable with. My bed. There's not a single bed in the world that's more comfy than mine. Um, it's just because I'm used to it and I love it. Um, so yeah, Chicago. If I could live anywhere, I'd be in Chicago. <sighs> Can you say something in French? The only thing I know in French is Jetem. Uh, I'm the worst when it comes to languages. I just can't. I can't remember them. I can't speak. I have no ear for dialect. I'm just the worst. Uh, I can't wait to see you at Rome, uh, Sophia. I can't wait to see you guys either. I'm actually super stoked for Rome. I, had, I haven't been there in a while. And again, that's probably one of my favorite places in the world to just eat. So I can't tell you how excited I am about that. Miss... Nenu Far, God, you are pretty. I'm crying. Don't cry. This is not what this is about. Just hang, have fun. I feel like my camera. There we go. I feel like it was blurry. Like I spit on it or something. Uh... Where did I just see that? Did you see my drawings on Instagram? Look at my picture. Look at my picture. Okay. Uh, tag me. So, Audrey. So tag it recently. So Instagram's crazy, but tag tag your picture, untag it, retag it, and it'll be on one of my most recent ones. And after this stream, I'll look at it and I'll look at your drawings, and obviously it'll be one of the top ones of that will draw me, and I'll check it out. Okay? Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. I love fan art. Um, Ross White, seventeen. To be honest, I see you as Ben Ten, not Parish. A lot of people do. I have uh, I have a bunch of random stuff. Wait, hold on. I have a bunch of posters and stuff, and I haven't hung it, but, like, I have some things from, like, my old days of when I was Ben 10. Um, I also have, when I went to the Ben 10 uh, Alien Swarm premiere, they had, like, a, a red carpet. Actually, I think it was a green carpet. Um, but they had this poster thing that was cloth, and it was, like, uh, like you know when people walk red carpets and you see, like, uh, ad banners on the back? Well, they had one of my face, and it was Ben 10 Alien Swarm. And at the end, I took it. And I remember asking if I could take it, and they were like, you know, the people who put it on, they're like, ah, we might, I don't know. And I was like, listen, I'm just going to take it. You guys look the other way, and if you get in trouble, you know where to call me, but like, you know, I'm taking it. And I took it, and I still have it, and it's in my garage, and it's one of, it's just, it's, it's so big, it's obnoxious, but it's funny, because it's, I've had that thing for so long. All right. Hello, Ryan. Could you say hi, Anella, please? It would be amazing. Well, there you go. Um... Let's see, let's get some questions. What are your accomplishments this year in your personal life? Um, well, as you guys know, Team Wolf ended, so it's been it's been tricky going from working on a show, you know, where you have a set schedule, um, a, you know, a steady paycheck. Uh, it's more of the time. Um, that's the thing about being an actor. Uh, you know, there's times where you work a lot, and there's times when you don't, and it's like these peaks and valleys, and. Um, Honestly, it's the, when I was younger, I was better with, I was better equipped to dealing with it. Um, I guess just because I I was more random and, and wild and just would go off and travel or do crazy things. Now I'm getting older, my age. I don't enjoy doing that stuff as much, so the downtime definitely gets to me. But the holidays are cool. You know, I did a lot of traveling, went to a lot of conventions. Um, I went back and saw a lot of family, um, and I knew this was going to be slow. This is a really slow time of the year, right after the holidays and the beginning of the year, the industry just shuts down. Um, 
So it's more just like sitting around waiting and hoping, you know, um, seeing family, trying to keep yourself busy. And starting now, like Sundance is just happening and it's almost over. That's really when the industry picks up and auditions will be happening. And then you go from being so slow, you're sitting around twiddling your thumbs to, uh, to you're slammed. Like auditions, meetings, it's just, it gets, it goes, it goes from one extreme to the other. So some of my personal goals have been, I just wanted to, I want to do things to fill my time better uh, on the slow parts. Um, I also want to get on another show or, you know, find some sort of, uh, consistency back in my life. Like I got so, I got so spoiled being on Teen Wolf for four years. Uh, you just take it for granted, you know, you're like, oh, I'm going to be working. Oh, I have to work Monday through Friday or, you know, like, oh, I have to wake up at, you know, t on, as an actor, there are times, you know, you're like, oh, I have to wake up at 4am cause I have a 5am call time. It changes all the time. Um, but you know, you, you sit there and, uh, and, and bitch and moan about it. And then when you don't have it, you're like, I miss those days. Uh, so I definitely miss the consistency of that and just knowing, oh, I, you know, it just gives you something to think about. It gives you a purpose. Um, so some of my personal goals were to, you know, as you guys know, Team Wolf was a very fitness show. They kept me in pretty good shape. They had me trainer, you know, had me with a trainer all the time. Um, and I wanted to make sure I maintained some of that. Not, I'm not as crazy as I was when I was on Team Wolf because um, that's a part-time job in itself. But I still, you know, fitness is something I really enjoy and, and I've uh, pers continued pursuing that. Um, you know, but otherwise, other personal things are just creating new and and making old friendships stronger. You know, I, the older I get, the more I realize the, the the my circle of friends gets smaller and smaller, and the people that actually matter in my life, I want to keep them around. Uh, whereas when I was younger, I tried to please too many people, um, and I was trying to please people that weren't really my friends and didn't really have my back. So as I've gotten older, my personal goals are to keep my group of of friends and loved ones small but strong. Uh, I think that's a I think that's a good good thing for everyone. Do I read fan fictions about? Oh, no, scroll up two quests. But do I read fan fictions? Um, I don't read them too much. I definitely have. Uh, I've I've read ones that are fascinating, like in terms of they should have been writing for the show, and I've read ones that are very crazy or very sexual. <laughs> and I I think it's all amazing. None of that. I think I think having a passion uh, about a show you know, in any way, shape or form is amazing. It's flattering. Uh, you know, it'd be, it'd be, I'd be offended if people didn't have fan fiction or anything. That's and not offended, but you'd be like, Oh, I'm not doing my job. The show stinks. Um, so when you see fan fiction, it doesn't matter how crazy it gets or how amazing it, you know, it's, it's just nothing but flattery in my opinion. It's, it's amazing. And the fact that people spend that much time on something that they, it's just amazing. Um, some of them, they, they need to be like writers for shows because some of the fan fiction is, you know, things where it's like, wow, that's amazing. Um, and then there are other ones that are still amazing, but just a little crazier. And those ones are also fun. You know, I have, anyone who knows me knows I have a crazy sense of humor and I laugh at everything. So I like it all. My thoughts on Australia. I love Australia. It's one of my favorite places. It's one of the places that I, I mean, obviously, because I live in California, Australia and California are pretty similar. Um, so if I ever had to like live somewhere else easily, it'd be Australia. I mean, it's so similar. It feels, you know, the language, all that stuff. It's just it's so... At, at, there are times when I was there, it just felt like I was in California. It's really weird um, to be that far across the world and in a different time zone and, and be so comfortable. Um, whereas sometimes you go to other cities, and it's not that you're not uncomfortable, but the language barrier um, or there's just the food and things are, are different. Um, it's, just, it's just crazy because Australia really feels like um, home. All right. You talked... You, uh, this thing, even though when I stop it, okay, you talked about a project you had in November. Where did it just go? Where'd it go? No, it scrolled up. Oh, in November. Is it done? Uh, what did I have in November? Project. I'm trying to think. I did the film, the, the, the horror suspense film uh, called Realms. Um, I don't know if it's out in your guys' area. In Asia, it's definitely out. Uh, and they had the premiere right around Christmas. Um, and they're, they're, figuring out a U.S. release. Um, and honestly, I haven't talked to him since, you know, the, again, it's been the holidays and, and you know, January's almost over, but I've sort of just been around family and, and just, I sort of take January and just like, don't even do anything because the, the entertainment area is dead for me uh, besides working uh, on that little thing I did on NCIS. But, um, but yeah, I haven't talked to him. I need to. That's a good reminder. I need to, I need to hit up the producers of Realms and figure out what's going on with the U U.S. release. Um, cause I hear the Asian one went amazing. They did a bunch of different cities. Um, I wasn't able to go because I was filming, um, which was a huge bummer. 
you know. But but that happens all the time. And uh, and golf, who's also who's in the film, I, I I talk to regularly, and he's amazing. And, and you know, he told me it went amazing, and I saw pictures, and it was really cool. Could you try a British accent? If I do any accents, I need a coach to get it to where it actually sounds real. Otherwise, it's always just like over the top and cheesy, you know. <laughs> um, all right, let me scroll down. Did you know the TV show Supernatural Hellhounds are invisible? Uh, I did know. I know um, just I knew that actually from someone else at a convention telling me. Um, again, you know, when I found out I was a hellhound on Team Wolf, I Googled it. And, you know, if, if I just, you know, if you just Google it on your computer, crazy things come up. Um, and that was a huge thing of mine is also a lot of evil things come up, you know, hell. Um, and that's some, something that's funny because Parrish ended up saying things like that. But when I first found out, I was like, am I evil, Jeff? You know, I had a conversation with Jeff and he was like, no, no, no. I mean, there might be questions at times, but you're in your core, you're good, but you're going to struggle with that. Um, so yeah, I didn't, uh, I know, you know, there's different versions of whatever people think hellhounds are and, uh, you know, Team Wolf went their own route and I thought it was pretty cool. Um, I tell this all the time when I, before I knew what Parrish was, I just wanted to be something useful. I didn't want to be I always say this, but I didn't want like to be the kid where the, you know, they're like, what's your power? And, like my finger glows, you know, like I didn't want to, I wanted to be able to help. So like when things hit, hit the fan, uh, I could help Scott and his pack. Um, and, and Parrish was, uh, at times very helpful and at times not, but at least, you know, at least he was at times, you know, pretty badass. and that's all I wanted. Um, and also I looked cool as hell with all the makeup that they did. It was, um, the special effects and most of that was prosthetics, not special effects. The only thing that was fake on me was my eyes didn't I didn't wear any contacts so when my eyes uh, were glowing that was special effects and the fire but all the other things like the the pulsing lava um, was prosthetics with cracks on my body and then they would have a black light and they would make it look like it pulsed so it was actually it was it was nuts it was amazing it took like three hours to get in uh, and it took an hour and a half to get out and you can imagine if you're doing a 16 hour day that's another three and a half hours um, and so at first I really liked the hellhound and then towards the end I had a love hate relationship with it when, when it's five in the morning freezing and you're basically being airbrushed with cold paint. It's, uh, it could get pretty brutal. All right. What's my inspiration? Um, what is my inspiration? I mean, I, I have actors and stuff that I look up to, um, that I that I would strive to be as talented as. But the older I get, the more I just like working and being around good people. Um, so when I see people, average people, uh, you know, not you know crazy heroes or anything like that, just doing good. Like, and you know, whether it's something as simple as holding the door for someone. Like, I love people with manners. Like, you know, if you're walking into a supermarket and you're like five steps behind someone and someone stops and holds the door for you and, you know, like, have a great day. Like, I love simple things like that. I love watching people just do kind things for other people. Um, you know, we're all human. We all screw up. We all have bad days. And there's definitely times when I don't hold the door because maybe I'm in a bad mood, but I try to like, you know, put your life in perspective and realize no matter how bad your day is, there are people out there that have it worse and just be positive. And in, and even on bad days, if you can just make someone smile or do something or keep a positive attitude, it just makes your day go by so much better. Um, you know, so I get inspired all day long from, from, from you guys, from things you guys say to us, um, to simple things, just watching people do good. Like, you know, everyone watches the news and a lot of times the news is terrible. But also on the news, there's sometimes where there's a, a regular Samaritan doing something that's above and beyond. And it's like, wow, that is amazing. I wish I could be like that person. Hopefully I can be like that person. And then you try to, to be better. If you could choose any superpower in real life, what would it be from, a, is it Basma? Um, what would I be? Probably being super strong or probably flying. Whoa, if you could hear one truth, what would you ask? How did you do that? That came up on my screen. If I could hear one truth, what would I ask? It'd be something about, like, what is the purpose of, you know, is there an afterlife or something like that? Um, I don't know. I have my own opinions, but again, I definitely, I don't think anyone is wrong. If, if someone thinks something, as long as you're not hurting someone, um, as long as you're not 
you know, destructive or, I don't know, it's a bad person. I think whatever you believe is, that can't be wrong. Like, how do you, I don't know, so I'm not going to judge you, and I hope you don't judge me, and I just, you know, if there, if there is a God, if you believe that or not, I definitely believe all forms of religion are a way to get to wherever you want to be, because how could some all-loving father not, you know, love you just because you were raised differently and learned something different? Um, yeah. <laughs> Would you ever think of having a spin-off about Parrish? <laughs> we always joked about this stuff. Um, I remember I, I once was talking with Holland on stage, and, uh, and I had said this exact thing where I said before, she swears she doesn't remember it, but I had said to her, you know, what, like jokingly, like, what if Parrish and Holland, or, well, Parrish and Lydia had a spin-off where, um, you know, they're just like detectives in, in Beacon Hills, um, obviously later on in life. And, uh, you know, and it's just them dealing with Beacon Hills things, figuring things out, almost like Supernatural. And then obviously characters from the cast pop back in and out all the time. Um, and the funny thing is, on stage in a convention, when I'm sitting right next to her, they ask her that question. And in my head, I'm thinking, oh, she's going to say what I said that time when we were talking about that, like jokingly, because it's a perfect answer. There's a million spinoff options, you know, like... There's a million, but we had specifically talked about this together not that long ago, and they asked her, and then she goes, she replaced me with Peter, uh, repairs with Peter, and I just, I remember being looking at her and being like, and she's like, what? We took, we didn't talk about this, and I was like, this was my idea! Um, so her story's different, but I swear, it was uh, Private Eye Parish. So yeah, I mean, a spinoff of Teen Wolf, uh, you know, any spinoff of any show or any character that got on Teen Wolf, if they had a spinoff, as long as it was good... I'd be all for it, even if I wasn't involved in it, as long as it was good. The worst thing you can do is when they do a spinoff and it just doesn't do the fans justice and they, they ruin the show. And then it just, like, you know, it, it, it sours the old show because it's just, like, do you, you know, you, as a fan, you think, like, did they not care? Did they not understand what made Teen Wolf special, why we love the show? Like, you just took something and ruined it, and now it's like, ah! So there's nothing worse than a bad spinoff, um... So if they ever did a spinoff for Teen Wolf, as long as they did get a good, as long as they did it good, I would be 100% behind it. Do you have any tattoos? If so, uh, no, I do not have any tattoos. I'm, as an actor, it's just harder. I mean, posing is, you know, there are actors that have tattoos. But if you have tattoos and you're playing a character without tattoos, it spends extra time in the makeup getting them covered. And I already spent enough time getting prosthetics on with the hell on. That's the last thing I wanted to do. So I've never wanted a tattoo recently. And I don't know if I ever will now that I'm getting older. Uh, I just read something. Um, uh, I saw something about... It was a... It just scrolled up so fast. But something about a tattoo in Paris. Is that... Uh, if I remember correctly... If you... Read on chat again because it scrolled up too much. But your name... If I remember correctly, is Allison. And you have the Be Confident tattoo, right? That's the one I think. It was in Paris. I don't see it anymore. It scrolled up too fast. Apologize. But yes, I remember that one, if that's who you are. Hi, Allison. Uh, what's your favorite... Where did this go? What's your favorite scene with Lyndon? Oh, I talk about this all the time. Uh, I think it was the end of season 3B when the Oni are attacking the station, the, ser the sheriff's station. We, ha Whenever we would shoot a finale... Just Teen Wolf magic would be 20-hour days, 24-hour days, sometimes 26-hour days. It was, it was crazy. It was just a cluster of just getting it done because it, it's just there was so much going on, and it just took forever. And I had been shooting with Lyndon all week uh, at the sheriff's station. You know, there's, we're shooting guns. There's people, blood. There's special effects. It's, you, you do scenes where the, the sheriff's station is destroyed, and there's scenes where it's not. Um... And uh, so we had been shooting for, I want to say, 18 plus hours, maybe 20 hours. And it was getting ready. It was like the final shot for, the final scene for Lyndon and I on the whole entire, of that season. And uh, and there's a scene where I, I like fall down, I'm shot, or attack, I'm cut with a knife, and I fall down, and he, the, the Oni's about to kill me, and, and the sheriff, Lyndon, steps in and shoots the shotgun and shoots him. Um, and we had been shooting this for a while. And, uh, sorry, I keep getting all these notifications, like, you've increased. Um, anyway, so he's supposed to come in, and it, again, we've been up for like 20 hours, we're loopy, we're tired, and so I do the same, I'm like, <sighs> and I fall down, and you know, it's like, he's supposed to step over me or go quick, and, uh, and he doesn't, 
And, you know, I'm sitting there like, and finally we're like, Lyndon, and we look back, and he had the shotgun on his forehead like this, dead asleep. <laughs> and, you know, the whole set was laughing. I, I almost peed my pants on that. And then we woke him up, and he was like, oh, sorry, you know, and he just had no idea where he was because we were so tired and exhausted. And uh, the next day he killed it, and I think that was like one of the last few takes I did with him on that season. And uh, that's my favorite Lyndon story is seeing him with a shotgun on his forehead that he leaned his forehead on to rest asleep. Just like, and he was out cold. It was great. Um, okay, so before I answer some more questions, do you sleep without socks? Uh, yeah, I hate sleeping with socks on at night, but I wear socks all day long. Um, I want you guys to know, I appreciate you guys coming on. This is, I'm not being paid to do this, so please do not send anything to me. Do not buy anything. It's, this is just me testing this out. Uh, I wanted to stream. I wanted to talk to the fans. I wanted to, you know, it's just a, you, a lot of you guys get to see me at conventions and a lot of you guys don't. And this is a way for you to see the real Ryan Kelly. Uh, I'm not anything like Parrish. I'm actually goofy and crazy. And um, I don't know. You guys can ask me questions and I'll do my best to get them. This is, you got, this is, this is way crazier than I thought. I didn't think you guys were all going to get this app. I'm glad, though, because that's one of the reasons why I tried to choose, choose this app is because it's more simple. Uh, and it seems to be working. Um, which is good, but please do not spend any money. Don't send me anything. This is this is just testing for me. Uh, I am just here for your questions and talking to you guys. I want you to hang out, have fun, ask me whatever you want, and I'll tr do my best to get them all. Uh, from Slygif, I love you, Ryan. Loved you in prayers for Bobby. Thank you. That's one of the most. I mean, that's uh, in my career. That's something that I have most. I'm so proud that I that I did that film. It's one of those projects that comes along where you're so just honored and blessed to be a part of that. that that film changed not saying Teen Wolf didn't change lives it did and Teen Wolf was amazing but Prayers for Bobby really you know for you guys who've seen it and if you haven't seen it check it out it's, uh, it's pretty sad so don't so don't watch it and then expect to do something afterwards but it's it's very powerful and it's it's something where I was incredibly honored to do some really be with some really cool organizations and you met a lot of people where you know mothers fathers, daughters, whatever, would come up to me and say, hey, that film changed the way my mom looks at me, so thank you. And then, you know, or uh, a, a father, you know, coming up to you and being like, you know, I didn't, I still don't quite understand it, but I, I want you, you know, no, thank you, because I now have a better understanding of how my son is feeling. You know, and things like that, it's like, whoa. Um, so yes, Prayers for Bobby is a, a dear, dear, dear thing in my heart. So thank you, I'm glad that it meant something to you. Um, yeah. My favorite Teen Wolf episode. And another question is, do I believe in supernatural creatures? I don't know. I don't think so. Maybe. I don't know. I just kind of go with the flow. But my favorite Teen Wolf episode for me, for Parrish, was where J.R. was stuck in the tunnel, dying with the rebar in him. Re rebar in him. Um, just because that was one of my favorite scenes to shoot on Teen So many, but that was just one that was, for Parrish, a pretty powerful scene. There was a lot of meaning behind that. Um, and Parrish, you know, I'm not saying Parrish wasn't deep, but there was a lot of times, you know, I, you know, Parrish was sort of floating in and out of the pack. And that was one where I really felt like he was helping and, and, you know, saving, uh, Arjun's life. Uh, pretty, pretty important. And talking about Allison, which was a huge thing that hadn't really been talked to. It was just cool. That was one of my favorite things to do. One of my favorite scenes in Teen Wolf nothing to do with Parrish. My favorite scene in Teen Wolf is simple. It's, uh, it's Liam, uh, Dylan Sprayberg, when he comes running out and they meet up with Scott, I think. It's either Scott or, uh, or um, Styles. And what, you know, he's just like, I fell in a hole. Like, that's my favorite scene on Teen Wolf. Like, yeah, that one, I, 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 I guess I read the script and just didn't read, I guess I just read right through it. So when I, when I saw it on camera, it's the only time in Teen Wolf that I was watching it live and I just couldn't stop laughing and I don't know why I just that it just got me and it was one of those things seeing Dylan Sprayberry say that and I wasn't expecting it and it was just I I, I have, again almost peed my pants and and when you know normally as an actor you know what's coming up and for some reason that one just it was one of those moments where I couldn't stop laughing and I probably paused it and replayed that probably about 15 times uh, thought it was amazing Gwen Gorjo can you see me I can't see you but I can see what you're typing uh, what is the most challenging script? Where did that just go? Wait, I stopped it and then... No! What is the most... Where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? What is the most challenging... I'm assuming it was something about... What is the most challenging... No, I lost it! Something of what is the most challenging... Prayers for Bobby was by far the most challenging script I've ever done. It was based on a true story about a young boy who was gay 
and you know this is no nowhere near back in the eighties I think um seventies maybe eighties uh I should know that um and his mother was trying to cure his disease being gay through religion and uh he ends up taking his own life and it's a true story and I got to read Bobby's Griffith's Bible or not Bible uh jur- like um journal personal journal and you can imagine the headspace of someone who ultimately ends up taking their life. Um, so filming that was incredibly difficult. I was constantly in a dark, uh, not a good place. It wasn't a lot of fun. Um, filming the project actually was not a lot of fun at all. It, it, I actually didn't really like it at all because, you know, you're in such a depressed mood. And for me as an actor, I can't float in and out. There's some actors that can do a very dramatic scene and then start laughing and cracking jokes. That's not, I can't do that. I have to, like, stay in that mindset. So I actually tell the story all the time. Sigourney Weaver always plays, like, the badass bitch. Uh, She she seems scary, and she's the complete opposite of that. She's this, I don't want to say class clown, because she's not a class clown, but she just is extremely beyond funny. And her stories, just because she's been around the industry and super successful, the stories that she has are fascinating, fascinating. So you always want to be around her. You're just gravitated to her. She's always saying something interesting. And I would constantly have to pull back and go away from her. And I'd hear stories, you know, her talking about Alien or something that I'm, like, fascinated with. But I would have to pull back because I was in the mind state. So it, was just, it, was, it wasn't a lot of fun for me. But once I finished... It was such a relief, and I knew it was something that I was gonna. I put 150 percent of my effort into, and I was so proud of it. Um, so it was the most challenging thing I've done to, to date. I've done some other things that are rough, but that was by far the hardest thing I've done. But now, once it was all said and done, I couldn't be more proud of it, and, and it's something that's up there and probably will be up there for the rest of my life. Jasmine B, my eyes. I told you guys this earlier. It's because so the tricks of the trade. Look at the. If you can see, see how there's like light in there. It's because. Because the light, the stream light, is making, it's giving me glow. It's just like on camera. So if I turn off the light, watch. Ah, too bright. It's not as good, see? You gotta have the light. I make it too bright. Eh. All right, there we go. But yes, see, tricks of the trade. Good lighting. Bro, they want to see Derek, bro. That's Carl. Carl. Yeah, I made Carl. (laughs) So this is Carl. Look, it's Carl, guys. This is my roommate. You guys might remember him from... What show were you on? It was um, Kim Possible. It was Possible. Waverly Place. Kim Possible. I wish I was on Kim Possible. Kim Possible's dope. Zeke. And this is Carl. Wait. Someone said, do I live alone? No, I live with this crazy guy. And then I have Daryl. We'll see if he can find Daryl. fun roommate? I'm like, no. let's party. Look how big he is, though. He's Yo, huge. Did you share it on through the app? Did you use the share feature? Dude, I don't know so anything. anything. All right, press the share stuff. So, like... Is the direct link? Oh, yeah, yeah, that share button. Do that. This one. Do that. Yeah. 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 Oh, to uh, to my socials. Yeah, I already did that. Oh, you did? Well, I just personally did. I didn't. I no, didn't. do that because it links right to it. Oh. Because like but, I was trying to, I couldn't find you. But don't you want that link? Yeah, but I want it to go right to it as well. So like people who like just are on right now can find you. Let's try. Because it's blowing up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Post on Twitter. Yeah, bro. I couldn't even find you. I was like, I know Ryan's on. I can't even find him. Okay, well, let me try on... See if you can find Daryl. Where is Daryl? Your link has been shared, copy. You can directly post it. Okay, I'm not doing that. All right, well, back to questions. Oh, no, no, what happened? There we go. Man, there's so many notifications. This this app, oh, it's it's blowing up. All right. All right, I'm going to go back. (laughs) The questions are blowing up. This is... It's too hard. Uh, Okay, let's go. Um... Scroll down to the bottom. Do you have another cat? Yeah, I have Daryl. So you found him. Look, I found him. <laughs> so that's Daryl. <laughs> he looks pissed. I got two cats. We have two dogs. Uh, we have two turtles. I had two birds. One passed away, and then I found a. I rehomed my bird to find because it was a, it needed a buddy, and uh, found. So yeah, so we used to have a zoo. Now we still have a zoo, but minus the birds. Um, I love animals more than people. I mean, animals are my favorite thing in the world, so anyone who's met me before knows that I am a crazy animal lover, and if I could, I would have a monkey. I would have everything. Um, do you like... Do you like the parody of your Instagram? Oh, wait, what did it... What did, why did, ugh, I stop it, and then it still goes. I don't understand why... 
Let's see if I can find that one. Do you like the parody? Why is this doing this every time I try to stop it? Oh man, it's getting hard. You guys are typing. Thank you guys. This is incredible. I didn't think you, this many people were going to come. Um, oh, the fan book I did. Yes, yes, yes. I love stuff like that. Um, okay, I'm scrolling down. We're going some new questions. What? What is your favorite scene with Holland from Chris, Christopher? Um, my favorite scene with Holland? We, I think we both said this at conventions. On Team Wolf, if you notice, not that often do the actors sit. A lot of times we're walking, we're doing different things or fighting or there's, you know, it's just very, very rarely are you sitting with another actor. So the scene where she's burning my hand or teaching me how to control my pain, um, it was one of the one of our favorite scenes because a it was a good scene, but also because we both were sitting, and when we both were filming it, I remember we were both cracking up, being like, "This is the first time I've ever sat on Team Wolf, like just doing this with someone else." And she was like, "Yeah, I can't remember if I've done this before or not." Hold on, I gotta let my cat out. He's freaking out now. Go, buddy. Go. We're back. All right. So for the new people that came in, we've got Batman. We've got Darth Vader and we've got all my pops and a lot of the bottom row are from fans. And I have, I have a bunch of fan ones in my bedroom too that, that, that you guys have given me. Um, but yeah, I'm just a big nerd. Uh, again, for the new people, I'm, this is just testing out. I'm not being paid to do this, so please do not buy anything to send me for money. This is just, just ask me questions, hang out. I'm trying to get all the questions, but this is, you guys are unbelievable. Ryan Kelly support, do you know, where'd it go, where'd that go? Do you know your Twitter fan page? I have seen Ryan Kelly support. I have seen the Twitter page. You guys are amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Who's your favorite character on Teen Wolf besides Parrish? That's, a, that's an easy one. Uh, Styles. I mean, I, I have... I, uh, Shelly's another... I mean, that's not her character, but... Um, you know, I have my favorites in different ways. Like, you know, Liam, just because of the, the whole, is like my favorite scene. But overall, Styles is my favorite character, even more than Parrish. He's just... You know, he's... Him and him, the the show the 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 most amazing relationship in the show is Styles and Scott, you know and the bromance between them. That's what the show was really about, um, and the scenes between them are always phenomenal. They are both incredible, and the friendship that they really had in real life. Those kids are really good friends. Um, shows on screen, and they are both beyond talented. So to watch them um, and and of that relationship, I just love Styles because he plays the more goofy, fun loving you know, just goofball, and that's more my personality, so he's definitely my favorite character, uh, besides Parrish, I and mean, I guess probably more than Parrish. How was filming Do I Say I Do? It was good. Um, the crazy thing about filming that was the schedule was so tight because it was in between filming a season of Teen Wolf, and there wasn't a lot of days, so we shot that in, like, nothing, I think less than two weeks. So there was a lot of dialogue in that, and I'm not used to, you know, on Teen Wolf, you get, I got pretty accustomed to it being pretty chill. You know, we all talk, but it's not, there's not, very rarely are, is there any monologues or anything too crazy. Every once in a while something comes up, you're like, oh, I have to actually study this. But you got pretty good at just relaxing and, and showing up. So then to cut to like two three or three weeks of filming where I just had pages and pages of dialogue, um, it was rough. I would, I would film for 16 hours, go home, study for as many hours as I could to learn my lines, and then pass out and wake up and do it again. It was it felt like a never-ending break, but uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, it was just it was a tight schedule, uh, which always makes things tricky. Uh, Tin Allison, Tin Allison, thank you for everything you've done. No, thank you guys again. This is the love and support you guys are showing right now. It's amazing. I didn't think it was going to be this this many because because the, I was worried people weren't going to download the app, but I wanted it's free. Um, again, I'm not being paid to do this, so please do not buy anything. Just enjoy it. Ask me questions. Uh, if you could ask a fan from Ryan Kelly team, if you could ask a fan any question, what would you ask? I love. I mean, that's so. These conventions that we've done throughout the years that a lot of you probably know about, and some of you don't. We travel around the world and meet fans. We get we get to ask questions to fans. Um, my favorite one to ask was what was what is Parrish? What do you think Parrish was before people knew that he was a hellhound? Um, that was a lot of fun um, to to see what people came up with, and I think only I think two people, uh, like to my face, people had said it or I had heard like options, but two people um, 
one in particular, uh, said to my face, you're a hellhound. Like, without, like, not even being like, I think you're a hellhound. And I'd be like, no, you're a hellhound. And I remember being like, in the back of my head, at that time I knew, and I was like, how the heck did they guess that? Like, what? And I had to be like, oh, that's a, that's interesting. But they, out of my mind, I was like, what? But most people would say like, you know, you're a salamander, or you're a phoenix, or you're a, I don't know, whatever. And then, you know, I'd be like, well, I don't know. Um, so that was my favorite question to ask fans. Now what I would ask, um, I'd like to ask, what did you guys think of, you know, you're not going to be able to answer it, but I, I liked, what did you guys think of the finale? Um, you know, the final season was a little bit tricky because we had characters coming back, we had schedules, you know, new old characters were coming back, there were new characters. You have to wrap up a whole story and just, it was just, it was, it was the writers, my hat goes off to them because they pulled magic out of, you know, we had 10 episodes left and we found out that we weren't coming back for a seventh season. So they had 10 episodes when they already had 10 episodes and they had already a thing. They had, they were like, well, you got to end the show. Like, and I don't know how you would do that. I, so it was, uh, man, the, the, what they pulled together was pretty amazing, but I still like to hear, you know, some of you guys thought, you know, I don't know. You know, it's some people like the ending, some people didn't, you know, uh, you know, again, as long as you have feelings about it, it's better than not. But, uh, I think the most of the people had overall good reaction to it. So I liked, I like talking to the fans and seeing what, you know, you thought of it. Uh, something that was so, such an, uh, an important thing in my life. It was four years of my life. And some of the kids on the show were on it, you know, like Posey and, and, and uh, O'Brien were on it since they were like little boys. Not little boys, but young, younger adults to now full-grown men. And you see their careers and how well they're doing. And it's, it's pretty it's astounding. It's, it's crazy. And, and all that is because of you guys, the fans, you, the, you guys literally made the show go on for as long as it did. Um, and that's, I mean, we can't thank you guys enough that that in itself is so special. What is the most embarrassing moment of your life from Bas uh, Basma? Most embarrassing moment in my life. I don't get embarrassed too easily. That's the thing, like, also as an actor, you're constantly auditioning in front of people and you're constantly getting rejected. As an actor, like, everyone, you know, you guys probably don't know this, but, you know, I auditioned for hundreds of things a year, all the time. You're always auditioning and you get rejected all the time, you know, so you get pretty, I don't know, it's, it, I, I've, I guess, I think, I think I've told this story before, um, I wore white gym shorts to the gym once no, nothing crazy just wearing white gym shorts like brand new white gym shorts athletic shorts going to the gym and I was eating a Snickers because I was starving and I needed and I stopped I got I was getting gas uh, at the gas station and I was late for what for whatever reason and uh, I was eating a chocolate bar a Snickers uh, again I was hungry and in a rush so I grabbed the Snickers ate it went to the gym didn't think anything of it but when I got back home I realized, first off, it looked like, how do I say this without being disgusting? It looked like I pooped my pants. Like, it looked like there was, it was in a weird spot, but it still looked like on white pants, it was like a brown spot. And I saw it in the mirror when I got home and I was like, well, like, first off, mortified. Like, uh, what is that? Uh, and I'm like, uh. and what it was is I, when I was eating the chocolate, a piece fell in my, and I have leather seats. So it fell in between my legs, which I didn't notice about, and it melted. So it looked like I, I pooped myself, I guess. And I worked out for two hours in the gym. No one said anything. And also imagine that. Imagine someone working out on a, on a machine or sitting on something. Imagine going to like a movie theater or a, or a, or a, a bench, like a, a bench at a park or in school, like a, a chair at, at, you know, a lunchroom. And you see a kid get up and it looks like he pooped himself and he walks away. You're not going to sit in that chair. So I, I'm sure people were just disgusted, but no one said anything to me. Like, I, I think if I saw that at the gym, I'd be like, hey, man, uh, it looks, you know, might want to check your shorts or something. Like, I'd be like, did you spill chocolate or, you know, and I actually did spill chocolate. But, uh, but I, when, I, when I went home, I just remember being like super embarrassed. But I was like, why didn't, it, also confused, like, why didn't anyone say anything? Like, that's kind of disgusting. And just as like, even though you're not my friend, like just to save your embarrassment, I would tell someone like, yo, man, like you might want to go look in the mirror on, behind your shorts and no one did. So that, that, if I think that's, I was embarrassed. I was alone by the time I got embarrassed. But like, if it would have happened at the gym, I probably would have been a little bit more embarrassed. But once I got home, I was like, well, screw it. I guess they had to deal with it. And they probably thought there was poop all over the gym now, but that's their fault for not saying anything to me. Cause I would have been like, look, it's chocolate. <laughs> Which is disgusting. Uh, all right. What's your next project 
from Clara. What's my next project or next thing? So I just finished a thing on a little thing on NCIS. I was just telling you guys, LA. Um, favorite season of Teen Wolf, the first one. I wasn't even in it. Um, but so my next projects are pilot. So it's been slow for the holidays. You know, Thanksgiving, Christmas. I was with family. Uh, January is always a slow time of the year for actors. Um, it doesn't really pick up till after Sundance for pilot season. So right now I've been doing a lot of nothing, <laughs> family traveling, fun things, something like this. This is a way for me to, to keep my mind busy and entertained. Um, but honestly, like next week I already have a ton of auditions and it's just getting back to the drawing board to figure out where you fit in. Like I said, as an actor, we audition all the time and sometimes you're not the right height. You're not the right look. You're not the right race. You're not funny enough. And it's not that you're not funny. You're just not funny that they're looking for. Like, you know, um, think of like Styles and Malia, like different types of sense of humor, both extremely funny. But if you were looking for one, you wouldn't cast the other. And that's how it is in acting. Like, you can't take it personally. You can't, it's hard to not take it personally because in your mind, you're like, I'm perfect for this role. And then you don't get it, but you have to understand that like, there's a lot of politics to, to it. And, and, you know, you just have to move on into the next one. So I actually, it's cool. It's, I'm thankfully back to being busy next week, and, which is good. I like, I'd rather, I like being busy rather than sitting around being slow. Uh, I, I can be slow for a little bit, but then I go stir crazy. All right. Jacob, what's your favorite color? Green. I'm Irish. Simple. Uh, can I, can you see my turtle? Now they're water turtles. So like I'd have to take my phone and go all the way. I mean, they're, you know, they're teeny little red ear sliders. They're cool. Like if you look up close, but they're not like. They're not like my cats. They're not going to come on camera and be cute. Like, they're cute from afar. They're like fish. I love the turtles, but, you know, they're, they're turtles. All right. Angry Princess, would you ever do a t-shirt campaign? Uh, I'd really love to have one. I did. I did a Parking with Parish t-shirt campaign. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I did that a couple of years ago, I think, or maybe two. or I don't know. But I did where it was my, my whole Parking with Parish thing on Instagram. I did a t-shirt for that. Um, and I did it for, for a great charity. Um, would I ever do one again? Maybe if the opportunity came, uh, I did one and you know, and it was awesome and, 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 uh, and I was really happy and, and I see them at conventions all the time, the t-shirt. Um, so I'm sad you missed out on that, but, but yeah, I did. I definitely did one. Mava, why did you become an actor? Um, let's see, I mean, it started as a way to pay for college. Like my parents, I feel like it's blurry. My parents got us into acting. I have 14 brothers and sisters. So it started as a way to help ourselves pay for college because my parents no way could afford you know college for fourteen kids, fifteen kids, um, and I ended up uh, biting my parents in the butt and not going to college. All my other siblings went to college. Go to college is smart. I still wish I went to college. If I could have go back in time, I would have gone to college and then continued pursuing acting. But when I was younger, I you know you know how we all are. We all think we're ten times smarter than our parents when in reality our parents are smarter than us at the moment. Uh, there comes a time where you become smarter, but, uh, but when you're younger and crazy, you're not. And uh, I didn't go to college, um, and it's worked out for me so far, but I still wish I ended up getting a degree if I could go back in time. Um, but I became an actor because it was something I've, I've done all my life, and I really enjoyed doing it. And when I was done with high school, and everyone was talking about going to college, trying to figure out what they wanted to do, I, in the back of my head, I was like, I have no idea what I want to do. I love acting. I, I think I can do that. I had done Smallville, um, and I watched these young actors do this for a living and, and talk about it. And I was like, this is an option. Like Up to that point, it was just something I did that my parents, uh, miss you on Team Wolf, thank you. Uh, it's something that my parents just kind of, not forced me to do, but you know, pushed me in, in, that, in that route. And, then, and when I did Smallville, I was like, oh wow, this is something I could potentially do. And that, that put the seed in my brain. And then, yeah, when it, when it came down for college, I was like, look, there's something, I'm doing something and I'm being paid and working at something that I really love to do. I have no idea what else I want to do and I don't really want to go to college at that time. So I, I ended up just moving to LA and pursuing, pursuing acting. Um, you guys, I keep seeing these wands being sent to me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't know what they do. Um, again, guys, this is just me testing this out. I'm not being paid to be here. I'm not normally on this. Save your money and if you're on this uh if you're on Live Me a lot, save your wands and stuff for other people and, and give them support. This is this is me for you guys. I'm just testing out streaming for the first time, really, and also answering some of your questions and having fun. And uh, I had some free time today, so I figured, why not? What is your favorite thing to do? What was your favorite thing to do on Teen Wolf? Uh, and what would you like to tell someone who's going through a hard time? 
Okay, so first I'll answer, wow, all these questions are coming up. Uh, okay, um, what is my favorite thing to do on Team Wolf? All the actors will say this and it's very true. Craft service. Craft service is a table where there's snacks and food and anything you can imagine all the time. So imagine like, you know how like when you live with your parents, like, you know, your fridge has, there's always snacks in it because your mom puts it. Like, that's awesome. Think of that on steroids. Um, Noella, I'm going to get to your question. Noella, uh, about the hard time thing. But, um, you know, think about, think about a, a table. I mean, like three tables at a time. Donuts, cake pops, candy, licorice, you know, coffee machines, espressos, donuts, uh, healthy snacks, tons of healthy snacks, especially on Team Wolf. We're pretty health orientated. Tons of snacks. So it's like, you have a table filled with food 24-7. So in between scenes or, or when, if, you were, if you had a, a long break, you're always at craft service. And that's where all the actors and everyone, I mean, the crew, you sit there and you eat and you're like eating food. Uh, that's, my, that's what I miss. That's what I miss most about Team Wolf, not the other actors. It's the free food. I have to pay for food now. What the heck? Uh, and Noella, I think it was Noella. What would I tell someone who's going through a hard time? Listen, I tell, I tell people this all the time. Um, it's... Everyone goes through hard times. Everyone does. Even myself. No ma- like, when you... Social media and this makes it really hard in life right now. Because when you're posting... Like, if I post on Instagram or if people post on Instagram, they're only posting happy fake moments, right? It's never like... You're not showing the sad parts. Some people do. But, you know, for the most part, it's just... It's... You see just happy. So you see your friends. You see... Uh, like, perfect example. Uh, I've actually... Tyler Hecklin is the one who got me to do this. Like, I've taken Instagram off my phone because I found myself looking at it way too much. And there was a time where I saw some of my closest friends in a picture that they just posted having, like, at night, having it look like the time of their life. And I felt really bad because I was like, why wasn't I invited? Like, what? Why didn't they invite me? And, like, I was hurt. I was genuinely hurt. And I didn't want to say anything to them because I'm older. It was like, you know, and I, I saw one of my friends later and I was like, yo, what did you guys do last night? And he's like, nothing. I stayed at home. And I was like, yeah, but I saw you with so, 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 X, Y, and Z. And he was like, dude, that was an old picture. And then I felt so stupid. And I was like, oh, man, I, I thought, man, I, and I told him the situation. He's like, dude, that night you were out of town filming. Like, whoa, there's a coffee cup? Why did that happen? Uh, you know, and I told him, and I was like, yeah, I felt bad. And he was like, man, you were out of town. Like, that was just an old picture I was posting. And that happens on social media all the time. Social media has made it so where we see people looking like they have the best life. They're rich, they're famous, their they're, they're parents buy them whatever, or they have more friends. Like A lot of it's fake. It's all fake. Um, and if you're going through a hard time, just know you are not alone. 100%. Go online. I mean, there are chat groups for it. There's other things. Like That film I was talking about that I did, Prayers for Bobby, Bobby was alone because back then, in his small little town that he grew up in, there were no other gay people that he knew about. And he went to the library and looked in a book, you know, what, what, what was gay people. And it said it was like an abomination and you're going to hell. Imagine that. They didn't have the internet back then. Now we have the internet and you have a support group that's built in. That's amazing. There are other people going through what you're going through. I promise. There are other people that are going through what you're going through even worse. Some people less, but there are people out there that care about you that will, that are going through it. And that can tell you like, it does get better. I promise you. Um, Throughout my life, there's been some horrible things that have happened to me. And you just have to know, you got to take it one day at a time. And it's not going to be better tomorrow, and it's not going to be better in a week. But you know, if you take it one day at a time, it's going to get better. I promise you, it gets better. It's just, you're going to go through a rough patch. So if you're going through a rough patch right now, hang in there. Do whatever it is to make you happy. Change things up. If, if it's being in your house that's making you feel sad, try to get out. Get out as much as you can. Go get fresh air. Maybe get an animal. Anything. Like, go to a shelter and help you know, little animals that you can't adopt, but you can help them out. Do anything just to get your mind off. Go see a movie. Like if I'm ever really feeling bad about myself or something's really gotten to me, like if I, if I get really excited about an, an audition and it doesn't happen, or if a relative is sick or passed away, some things for me that really works is I go to the movies by myself. I'm that loser in the film that's sitting alone, eating popcorn, watching the movie. And people are like, who's this weirdo? That's me because it makes me happy. It takes me away from whatever problems I'm having for an hour and I can reset so you got to find what makes you happy and just and do it. Um, it's not always easy. And like I said, there's going to be days where getting out of bed's hard. And you just got to know, maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow. But I promise you it does get better. And there are other people out there that are going through it. So just hang in there. I promise you. Um, who is more muscular, me or Cody? <laughs> um, Cody is a little beast. And I, and I only say little just because he's younger than me. He's not little at all. Um, he is a young adult now. Um, but he's, that kid is a beast. He, he cares about fitness more than I do. And he knows his shit. Um, 
A lot, everyone on Team Wolf is pretty fitness orientated, but Cody is pretty, man, that kid is, he knows his, he's, he's really into it. Like I got in shape for Team Wolf and I like looking good, but I don't care about it. I actually go to the gym and I'm like, ah, I hate the gym. The hardest part is walking through it. I hate it. I like the effects of it. And I like, my favorite time is leaving the gym. That's the best time in the world is leaving the gym when you get to go home. Um, I don't like any of it. Like, it's just not fun. It's, we all know this. I don't think a lot of people think it's fun. Cody actually likes it. So, so he's, he's, Cody beats me. He's, I, there are times where I'd ask him questions. He is, uh, he's extremely talented and, and, and knowledgeable in that, in that aspect. So, so I'd say between me and Cody, he wins. Don't tell him I said that though. Um, all right. Okay. From Richard. What if Jordan would have been a teenager? Why did it just, every time I pause it, it just like, would have been a teenager in Teen Wolf. Do you, oh my God, it keeps scrolling up every time, no matter how I try. What if Jordan would have been a teenager? Um, I mean, Jordan was a teenager at some point. He wasn't in Beacon Hills. Uh, when he came to Beacon Hills, he was supernatural. He didn't know it, but that's why he was drawn to Beacon Hills. So, if he was a teenager, I don't know. I don't think he wouldn't have been there. He wouldn't have been in, in, in Beacon Hills because what brought him to Beacon Hills was being a hellhound and the beast. Um, so it wouldn't have made sense if he was a teenager. But if he was, I would have told him to get out of town. <laughs> Move. All right. Uh, in a week, I have my driver's test. Can you wish me good luck? Good luck. Good luck on your driver's test. What's funny is I have a friend um, who, who just moved from New Zealand. Um, and I was helping her get her driver's test, and she's my age. And uh, it was funny because, you know, we did this when we were younger, uh, and she was doing it because, you know, if, if I moved to any other country, um, I would have to take the driver's test because you don't know if I knew how to drive where I'm from. But it's funny when, as an adult, having to take a driver's test, it's, it's just, it's, it was just funny. So I, I recently just did that too. I was, she had to use my car and my insurance, all that stuff, and got her, and she passed. You know, so don't freak out, calm down. They're actually, you know, for the most part, they're pretty chill. Like the worst thing you can do is panic and then, you know, you're going to get marks off. Even if I took the driving test right now or anyone, like you're going to do things wrong in terms of what they think is perfect. So just do the best you can. Be smart, 10 and 2, and you'll pass 100%. When you come to Paris, you owe me a drink. Do you remember champagne? I, I think I do. So I owe you champagne? All right. I'm, I like champagne. I'm not going to complain there. What's my favorite Funko Pop I own? Um, probably this one. Because you guys, because you guys, if you guys can't figure it out, <laughs> it's one of the first ones I got. Team Wolf. The original ones, I'm pretty sure. Um, but yeah, so that's what got me into the realm of all these, and now I have way too many, and I look like a crazy collector. All right. What's a gift from a fan that stood out to you from Ryan Kelly team? Um, fan books. I say this all the time. Fan books are blow me away. The amount of time and effort that are put into fan books, mind boggling. You know, you guys have these books and a lot of them are handwritten, traveled around the world. Or sometimes people send them all to one person and they handwrite it in. And, um, you know, there's hundreds of people, you know, sometimes 10, but even 10 is crazy. But I'll have fan books with hundreds of people in it with personal letters um, pictures that they've drawn, things that they've said, personal messages. And that's just amazing because the amount of time and energy that would take is mind blowing. And it's, I can't tell you guys how much I love those and thank you. And, and even not fan books, but just letters. Like I, I do, um, I see, I've seen a couple of them where it's like, did you read my letter? Did you, you know, I do, I, you know, we, we get a lot of fan mail and a lot of times in the mail, you guys ask us to do things like follow you on Twitter or, you know, can you do X, Y, and Z or send me a picture to, you know, to this. And it's, it's terrible, but we have so many, you know, I get so much fan mail sent to the Team Wolf office, sent to my managers. I read them. I do my best to read them. I really do. Especially when we go to Comex, 100% I read them because I'm over the overseas in, in my hotel. I read them at night. But the fan mail that come to us in the States is a lot. And I read them. It's just hard to, you know, we can't follow everyone on Twitter. We can't follow everyone on Instagram. We can't send a video wishing someone a happy birthday every time, you know, cause if we did that for one, we, I, that'd be a full-time job for me. I would never, I'd never be able to do anything else. 
Um, so I hope you guys don't take that personally when you guys ask for us to send videos or pictures or whatever. We just can't. I mean, we wish we could, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it gets, it's, it's intense and, and it's impossible. We never get to everyone. It's just like this. Like, I would love to answer all your questions right now. Um, and I can't thank you guys enough for the support. I, I, I love you guys. But it's just, it's, if, you know, it's a, like, if you look, it's like, I can't, I can't, I can't, I'd be here all night. Um, so we do our best. And the best thing we can do is read, the, 100% read the messages, and we appreciate it. Um, um, and we appreciate it, but, you know, we, we can't do it all. Uh, we're, not, we're not machines. So just know, we, we, we do read them. We, we appreciate it so much. We love it. Um, and we read them, and we do the best we can, but we can't always send, you know, Twitter messages or, or pictures or things like that. I just saw one across uh, any... Advice for someone who's not good at something that they want to become, practice. Um, practice, practice, practice. That's the best thing you can do. Uh, if you want to be an actor, take cl acting classes. You know, don't sit around and, and um, doesn't matter what you do. If you want to be a dancer, like you have to be doing your craft. Uh, if, if <laughs> I play video games, it's, you know, when, I, when I'm working a lot and then I come back and play with my friends, I'm terrible. And it takes me a long time to get good again. And, and that's just a way for me to relate because I play a lot of video games. But, you know, it's, if you're a basketball player, like, when they get injured and they come back, they're not as good because it's practice. Everything is practice. Even your jobs, you know, like, I've had regular jobs in my life before. And the more you do it, the better you get at it. Um, it's just like conventions, you know, it's Team Wolf. Like, I don't know if some of you guys saw the, the, the first couple of conventions I did. I was probably terrible at it because you don't you you just get better at answering questions. You get better at understanding. You get better at doing this. Um, so literally, practice makes perfect. It literally is the best thing you can do. And you can even do, for instance, if you want to be an actor and you can't afford to act, go to acting classes, watch a movie, then go into your room like this and record yourself and do the scene. Or don't even record yourself and just practice. Practice accents. Practice doing scenes that make you cry. Practice scenes that make you laugh. And it's uh, your own way of just doing it. Like, no matter how, whatever situation you're in, you can find a way to practice what you want to be doing. Um, it might not be the best. Like, if you're doing a team sport and, and you need other people, you can still practice your individual things. But, you know, practice is the most important thing. All right. Let's go down the questions. How do I find out about conventions from Life Flucci? Um, the Internet. We post a lot of information. But otherwise... Uh, you know, the social media community, if you follow certain people or you, you can find their pages, you can Google it. Um, I'm not the best. I sort of, it's sort of like an actor. I sh they tell me where to go. I show up and I do my best. I don't, I'm not the one who puts it together. I don't even get a choice of whether I'm invited or not. They have to invite me. So I've talked about this earlier. A lot of people uh, say, hey, why didn't you come to this convention or why don't you come to, to Italy? I, I wasn't invited. It's plain and simple. I would have if I could have. Or there's a scheduling conflict. Like sometimes... Um, Daryl and Carl okay? Yes, they're okay. Uh, sometimes, you know, we have work and we can't do the convention. Uh, it's, the, it's the nature of the beast. You know, we, our job is actors first and then we do these conventions um, and we try to meet you guys because it's one of our favorite things is to, to see the love and support from you guys and get to meet you in person. Um, but sometimes we just can't. Let's see. Would you audition for Supernatural? from, uh, I already lost it, <laughs> but what I audition for, I don't audition for anything, I'm an actor, um, as long as it's not like a, I mean, I've done some weird stuff as an actor, so as long as it's not like, you know, you, you guys know what I'm talking about, there's, there's some movies out there that are just not really acting, or maybe not even movies, and it's just for shock value, or, or to be gross, I'm not trying to do that, but in terms of a job, uh, any show on television, even if I don't like the show, just like you guys, you don't always like your job. It's still working. And I love being in front of the camera. I might not, it, the show might not be my favorite, but I'm still going to be on it because it's, I, I get to act. And acting is my favorite thing. And the storylines is different. I was blessed to be on Team Wolf, and I actually liked Team Wolf before I was ever on it. Um, but that's not always the case. Um, I've done shows, I've, been, I've done guest spots on shows that I had no clue about it until I got on it. Uh, that just happens. Tiffany, do you have any price, uh, advice for depression? I sort of just kind of talked about that. It gets better, you know? Uh, you got to hang in there. You got to realize you're not alone. And you got to be around loved ones. Do whatever makes you happy. Maybe maybe loved ones don't make you happy. 
Maybe maybe movies make you happy. Maybe video games make you happy. Maybe streaming. Um, Twitch. There's a huge community on Twitch where you can watch other people talking about things just like this. This app, Live Me. Like you can meet people. You can talk to them um, about your problems and know that you're not alone. And the cool thing about the internet is, if you want, you can be, you know, hidden. You don't have to let people know exactly who you are. You can tell them all your problems and be anonymous. And it's pretty cool because you can talk as long as you're serious about it. You can talk to people who have knowledge in that or have experience and they'll tell you you know they'll they'll be better suited for this conversation but just know it gets better it, 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 it does um you just have to be willing to put in the effort to get help uh, or to try to change your life like whatever is making you depressed or whatever the thing is you know you just you you have to come up with a plan and and execute it um and like i said we all have our times some people have it worse than others some people can't understand what you're going through you have to know that you know, not everyone's going to understand everything you go through. Um, also, people are weird. Uh, there's people I get along with, and there's people I don't. And there's people you care about, and there's people you don't. And I don't want to—I don't wish anything bad about those people. But you know, keep the, keep your good ones close. And uh, and I think that's just a good thing in life is to to just try not to worry about too much what other people think about you, and just handle your things yourself. Know you're not alone. Know there are people out there that love you, and do your best to to try to make it better. If just put in the effort. <laughs> do I know when they're going to re release Lucifer in the U.S.? Nope, <laughs> they're still working on it. So that's some, that's sometimes the craziest thing about being an actor is you do projects and things fall through, or they're or they get put on the back burner. Um, a lot of production companies have, you know, like we we talked about it a little. I did a film called Do I Say I Do. Uh, <laughs> And I had no idea, I did that a while ago, not a while ago, but I did it a pretty long time ago. And you have no idea when they're going to come out because they had 20 other films that they're figuring out when they want to release. And as an actor, it's frustrating because you're like, ah, oh, I want to see it. And, you know, and they're like, well, you know, we have, they're, they're, they're a company. They have a business mind. They're not just out there putting everything out. So they have a plan. And so a lot of times, you know, with Lucifer, they're working on making sure they get the best deal, um, getting their money returned or whatever, whatever it is that holding is. I'm not, I'm just the actor. Um, but I, 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 they used to have a plan for when they was going to come out, and now they've got other projects that they're putting forward first, and then they'll get back to that. So again, it could be a year, it could be 10 years, who knows? Like, that's the craziest thing about an actor. Is sometimes projects get released when you're never expecting it. You think it just disappeared and it shows up. You'll, you'll make sure they invite me again for Amsterdam? Well, thank you. Amsterdam's one, I mean, Amsterdam's an amazing city. I love it. What is this coffee thing? It was like, it's like um, Snapchat filters, but I, so I guess someone's donating. Again, for the new people in here, I'm just testing this out. I'm not being paid to be on here, so please do not spend any money to send to me. I don't, just your guys' love and support and questions is all I want. Like, I'm doing this, you know, to test streaming, something I, I said I'm, I'm interested in, but I want, um, I'm just here to answer your questions, hang out for a little bit, and have fun. Um, please don't, don't spend your money. Just, just you being here is enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, is there a part of the staff at the convention? Whoa, 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 whoa. Why did that go? Why did it? <laughs> so bad at this, but it's not me. Every time I try to like, pa like, I gotta like highlight it and stop it. It with you guys chatting so much, it won't let me stop. Like a normal chat, where like if you use the slider, you can stop it and scroll up, but it just keeps making me. Uh, if I'm stressed, what do I do? Uh, sort of what I just talked about: movies, movies, and television take me away from my stress. Um, that's one of the reasons why I became an actor, like why when I was younger, I loved acting so much. It took me away from my problems. It took me away from, you know, whatever it is you're going through, um, for that hour or that 30 minutes or that 15 minutes you put the show on or, you know, going to a movie theater that it's an experience and, and it makes you go away to fantasy world. I love, I love supernatural things. I love fantasy films. I love all things, but like. If I can, in my head, pretend I'm in Lord of the Rings and watching that movie when it came out, or Transformers when I was a kid, the first Transformers, like, I remember I saw Transformers, and uh, I think I was going through a breakup, and for that three hours or two hours, I wasn't thinking about that breakup, it was just recent, and it took me away, and that's why I love film and television. For me, it takes me out of my problems. Some people like sports, some people like knitting, drawing, video games, whatever it is. Um, if you're stressed, figure out what makes you not stressed and do that, and try to do that more. Obviously, not everyone can go see movies all the time. I, just, I can't see movies all the time. But key moments in my life when I need to, 
you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna drop what I'm doing right now. I'm gonna not worry about it. If, if I don't need to handle it right now, I'm gonna go see a movie, clear my brain, come back, reset. Uh, sorry, some of the questions I can't even read. <laughs> uh, do you have a favorite book? Um, what's funny is the, uh, I think Max just posted it. Um, uh, Red Rising. It's a series that his friend Pierce, I should know the last name, I don't. Uh, um, his friend wrote. And it's a book called Red Rising, and then there's Golden Rising, or Sun Rising, or Blue Rising, something like that. There's a trilogy. Well, there's just a new book that came out that I ordered, and I'm beyond stoked for it. And it's one of my favorite books that I've read in a while, because it's like a mix between, like, a not, I don't want to say it's a children's book, because it's not, but it's super fantasy. And the stories and the characters are so well-formed. So the first book, the first book, someone recommended it to me, I read it. Within... I don't know, the first two or three chapters, I'm bawling. I was on a plane reading it. I was bawling, like full on crying. It's one of the saddest things I've read in a long time. I'm not going to ruin it for you, but it's sad. And and I'm sitting here reading this book. It's sort of like, I, I had two experiences like that. That and Up. I watched Up, the movie, on a plane, and then the first five minutes, I'm bawling, and this lady's looking at me like something's wrong with me, and I was like, I thought this was a kid's film, you know, and I'm crying. Same thing with this book, like, I was bawling, and I was like, oh my god, what am I get? what did I get myself into? But it was so good, I was captivated. Read the first book, I had to buy the other two, and I read them so quick. So Red Rising is the first book, I believe, let me, Red, yeah, Red Rising is the first, uh, yeah, there's, Golden Sun and Morning Star. Um, and then there's a new one that just came out. But if you guys want a good book, start with Red Rising. And if you if that book doesn't hook you, I don't know what to tell you. Because it's it's fascinating. It's a whole it's a completely different world and it just boom hits you. I don't know. Re read it. It's one of the best books I've read in a long time. Um, Alright, back to questions. Do you love horror movie? One example. I do not like horror films. I can film horror films because it's not real. And it's not scary when you're filming it. In fact, a lot of times, like, for instance, Lucifer or other films, you know, when it's a dark hallway, they make it look dark in the post. In reality, you're walking through, like, daylight. Like, like on Teen Wolf, if it's spooky, we're out in the woods in the middle of the night. I'm all alone. I'm not alone. There's 50 people around me filming me and lights everywhere, and they make it look spooky later. But, like, it's not scary to film. Watching horror films, I can't do. I'm the biggest baby in the world. I don't like suspense. I don't like gore. I don't like blood i don't like any of that like that is the one thing i love all movies i love romantic comedies i'm like a girl i like action films i like you name it i love kids cartoon films i love it all not horror films i can't watch them it gives me anxiety i i'm I, like nothing in the real world scares me like i'll walk down a dark alley like, I'm, it doesn't scare me horror films terrify me like, and then they'll give me nightmares i'm a big baby i can't do horror films i don't want to watch it i don't even want to talk about it it's giving me anxiety right now Are you afraid of being stuck in the parish role from Naisa? Um, no. No. So definitely nowadays, like back in the day, you used to get typecast a lot more. Um, I'm not stuck in parish. It's, I mean, parish is over. It wasn't also long enough to where it's, you know, it's not like back in the day, people used to do shows for like 10 years and be, be typecast as that. And it was harder to break. Nowadays, the cross between film and television, it's really not a big, it's really not a thing anymore to be typecasted. Um, I guess if you want to be a little more specific, like, because of Paris Teen Wolf, um, oh my god, you don't acknowledge your gifters or com comments. I'm trying to get at the comments, and the gifters, I told you, thank you guys for the gifts. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please don't be sending me gifts. I want you guys to save your money. Do not spend anything on me. This is not, I'm just testing. Please, please, please. Thank you for the gifts, but do not send them. Save them for someone else's channel if you guys are big on this website. Save them for someone else. Um, I'm just here to chat. Have fun. Also, this is my first time using the app, so I have all these things are coming up. I don't even know. I'm on my phone, and I'm also watching the chat on my computer, but, like, I don't know what's going on. I, this is my first time on it. I'm not being paid. No one's taught me anything. My roommate knows more about this than me. I'm just, you know, I'm just doing it. How was working with Tom Welling? He's amazing. Uh, I actually know Tom now, which is funny. Um, Tom Welling uh, is from Smallville. When I did, I was teeny, 16 years old, I think, or 15 years old, my first time I did it, and I came back in the second season. Um, and uh, 
<laughs> and I mean, that show changed my life. T Teen Wolf was, um, I told you, the show that made me realize that I could do this for a living. And watching Tom and Kristen Kirk and all them, Allison Mack, like watching them. Uh, have I ever had a fan pass out for me to meet? No. Um, but meeting them, you know, watching them handle these adult things and like acting, it was that's what put it in my brain. And so it was funny, years later, another friend of mine is friends with Tom, and I met him at a party, and I was like, Tom Welling? And he was like, hey, it's nice to meet you. And I was like, yo, you're not going to remember this. But the first season of, Team, uh, of Smallville, and second season, I was a, a little kid named Ryan. I could read minds, and he remembered like that. And he's like, oh, he's like, wow, okay, crazy. And, you know, he's like, you make me feel old. And I was like, man, I feel old just saying that. Like, wow. And I was a little kid, and Tom's a big guy. Um, now that I'm bigger now, but, um, but yeah. And then back, I, I got cut off. Um, Back to the question about typecast. Uh, now I'm a little more musclier, I guess. I, I have a, I have put on size compared to if I could show you guys. I saw this meme. Someone made it. Uh, like, oh man, it was it was it was a picture of me, and I've posted it before. I think a uh, picture of me. <laughs> super skinny and then me on Teen Wolf where I was I've put on some size Teen Wolf made me put on size like that was one of the things they're like we need you to put on size you can't be a skinny when I did prayers for Bobby um, so I guess now my roles I can't play the skinny kid anymore so I I don't want to say it's typecasted it's just more like my body type and um, and you know I'm older now so I, I can't really play those younger skinny roles anymore so I don't want to say it's typecasted it's just more body type uh, and, and fitness is still important in my life so I don't mind it I was part of the staff uh, at the convention in Toulouse. Uh, Claire. Hi, Claire. Wish I could see your face, but you can see mine. Hope you're doing well. Um, let's see. Uh -huh. When will you get married? From Christopher. Um, you know, I'm in no rush. Uh, like I said, I have 14 brothers and sisters. They're all getting married and doing their thing, and I have nieces and nephews. It's not my time right now. I'm at Los Angeles is a little bit different. We're more, you know, you're focused on your career, which is a little bit different. It's harder to be an actor and be in a serious relationship. It's not impossible, but you know, you travel the world. You're away from loved ones. You're it's just harder. Um, so I'm definitely don't want to be alone, but I'm also not, you know, dying to. I'm not trying to force anything. So if it happens, it happens. If not. Well, then I have my cats, right? You like Pokemon. What is your favorite Pokemon? Pikachu. Come on. I mean, Pikachu or Squirtle. I like turtles. Pikachu is cute. Squirtle's probably my favorite. Why are there no uh, pullovers with Parish on it? I don't know. You tell me. That's a good question. Uh, something about Ben 10. Would you like to play an adult version of Ben 10? Are you kidding me? Yes! I just showed, I had a poster. I have a poster and I already talked about it. But, um, dude, I, so Ben 10, when I did the first Ben 10 film, it was supposed to be a three picture deal. Didn't get to do the other two. Uh, politics have happened. Um, uh, and sadly, we didn't get to do the other three, which is which is a bummer. I'm glad you're old Nathan and all that. We really wanted to do it. It's just, there was politics involved and we didn't, we didn't get to do it. But the film was awesome. I had a blast doing it. That was one of my favorite movies to film because half the time I wasn't even on camera like as Ben 10 I'd transform and then I'd run off camera and I'd have like 15 to 10 minutes while the rest of the cast was continuing to act and I was just off there again at craft services eating candy like mm, this is easy uh, you know and one of my favorite moments as an actor I've had some pretty cool moments this is related to Ben 10 and it's I don't know, it's just, just the timing of it, it just happened so perfectly. So I was in my green jacket, I had the watch on, and we were driving Kevin Eleven's car. I was driving it because Nathan Keyes, I don't know, didn't want to drive it for some reason. Or he, I think I just wanted to drive it, I don't remember why. But so we were going around the block, he was supposed to be driving, but I was driving at this point. And we're going around a large block where we we're filming, we we're doing the scene where we're pulling up, speeding up and pulling up to this gas station or something like that. And we're going around the block. It's like 3 in the afternoon or 2 in the afternoon, and I pull up next to a bus, a yellow school bus. And it just so happened that this school bus was filled with kids in the early elementary school, the kids who would watch Ben 10, like younger 
versions of you know people, younger kids, and their faces were glued to the side of the bu- of the bus. Imagine imagine being a little kid and seeing one of your favorite television shows, seeing the car next to you in real life, like real life, looking in. Kevin Eleven dressed head to toe, and Ben Ten dressed head to toe, and we stopped at a stop sign, and the kids were freaking out, like their faces were up again, they're pounding on the window doing this. So I'm honking the horn, and I get out. And I, you know, I showed them the watch, and these kids were just going crazy. And it's, it was like, it couldn't have been more perfect because I just pulled up next to a bus filled with kids who were fans of the show, and it was just, I don't know, it was like, it, it's like being Santa Claus to a little, like, see, like I was just, it was, it just, it was so perfect. It was one of the coolest things I've ever done seeing these younger kids. I don't know if they really believed I was Ben Ten, but I looked like it. And we had the, it was just nuts. So it would just be like so confused, and then they were so happy and like pounding on the bus and even the bus driver didn't know what was going on and he was just like letting the kids watch it and it was pretty cool it's one of my one of my favorite moments as an actor i have a couple of them but that's at least top five if not top three just how cool that was uh marvel or dc uh marvel marvel i uh, yeah i mostly have marvel back there anyway um all right let's scroll down you guys again i just want to thank you guys for all coming in this is this is way busier than i thought it was going to be i didn't know if you guys were going to get the app i keep saying this but i want you guys to know Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Um, favorite Disney film? Mm, Lion King. Uh, thank you, guys, for for coming and showing support. Uh, this, I'm not being paid to do this. So, again, please don't send me donations. Don't send me anything. I'm just here to chat, have fun, check this out, try it out, see what happens. Um, a lot of you guys meet me in conventions. Some of you guys don't. Um, you guys know me from Team Wolf probably for the most part, but you don't get to see this part. So this is I enjoy doing this. I enjoy getting, you know, when I have free time um, to come and, 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 and let you guys... I guess see Ryan Kelly the actor, the real person. So thank you guys. You guys, this this is. I wish I could get to all the questions. You guys are amazing. Um, what's my favorite song at the moment? Uh, I've been listening to like a lot of old school stuff, which is weird. I'm not normally. I normally like like new music, um, but I mean Ed Sheeran is amazing. So any any song he's been going out with, Eminem came out with a new album. There's a cool, his song on that is amazing. Um, but I've been listening to a lot of like old rock for whatever reason it's not normally what I listen to but lately I've just been doing it I don't know um Realms will be released in Europe I don't know when that's why I kind of talked about this earlier in America the states and Europe I, they they were supposed to be in December and something happened where the deal fell through all of Asia is released um uh, it's coming it's coming I promise you uh the Asia release went amazing better than we expected so it's coming uh do I like Good luck. Uh, where'd that go? Is it Kylie, Kaylee? Good luck on my auditions next week. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, what's your favorite dish? Pizza. Can't go wrong with pizza. Hot dogs. No, pizza. I'm going to go with pizza. If you could play... Dude, i got to get figure out how to make this and not stop scrolling up. Um, if you could... If you could play on a show or series besides Teen Wolf, what would it be? I watch a lot of television, like an unhealthy amount of television. You guys keep giving me stars and pizza and stuff. Thank you, guys. You can, please, save that stuff. Save it. I'm just here answering questions. Do you, save your money. Save your stars. Give it to other streamers, other other people on. Save it. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Um, so if I could be on any other series, I watch an unhealthy amount of television and movies, as you guys know. Uh, it's my favorite thing. I think, right? I mean, Game of Thrones, that's a clear answer, just because it's so epic and so massive and... Their sets are uh, just incredible. That would be amazing to me on Game of Thrones. I'm going to take that. Um, yeah. All right. Would you like to see t- Teen Hellhound in Teen Wolf Reboot? <laughs> Teen Hellhound? <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess. Um, most Hellhounds are really old, though. Um, yeah, there's. I mean, there's some crazy reboots that could have happened or spinoffs. At one point, they were going to do... Uh, um, uh, uh, young Derek and, and uh, Peter spinoff, and it didn't go through. But they were they were that was like the closest there ever was to a spinoff in my in from as long as I know or as far as I know, um, and that would have been cool. And it just fell through. A uh, young Derek and young Peter. They even had the kids cast. Remember when they came on the show? Those younger ones. They were gonna have a spinoff, um, and I think Team Wolf just got too crazy or too busy or whatever reason it didn't happen. Um, but it would have been cool, right? Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. Seen a lot of crying faces. What, Roisha? Crying faces. Why are you crying? Don't cry. 
What's your favorite memory with Holland? Um, I knew Holland before Team Wolf. So my memory is not from them, just letting you guys know. Uh, so I already knew Holland. I knew Holland and Hecklin before Team Wolf started, personally. Um, one of my favorite mem memories with Holland is we had a, it was, I was in Rome with her for a convention and we had like two days off or whatever, or, or we were, everyone else left town, they got out quick, and Holland and I, we didn't plan on it, but we had two extra days, um, and we are, we were already there early, but our plane left two days later than everyone else's, and we are like, well, okay, cool, um, and, and I was like, Holland, uh, what do you want to, like, do you have any plans, like, I don't want to intrude, um, but, you know, what do you, uh, I'm bored, I'm not doing it, you want to do anything, and she took me around to her favorite food spots in Rome, and boy, does that girl know some good food. Because I think some of the best pasta I ever had in my entire life was Holland's favorite. I went to Ian's favorite place, and I went to Holland's. And in my opinion, Holland won. And I've told this to Ian, and he gets really upset. His was really good. But Holland's was... Holland's favorite spot that she took me to was magic. It was crack. It was the best pasta I've ever had. They, like, made it in front of you. They, like... Oh, it was amazing. Um, so that's one of my favorite moments is... Um, is with Holland showing me her favorite places to eat because she's pretty good. Both of them, both Ian and Holland, know a lot of places and are very knowledgeable when it comes to food places. If you ever ask them, they got lists. I always forget them, but... Um, all right. Xbox or PS4? I have Xbox. I like both, but I have an Xbox. Um, but I mostly play games on PC. Um, I like my computer. I have a, where, where I'm at right now, I have my... I don't want to call it a man cave, but I have my setup. I love it. It's easy, it's simple. Um, what was it like to make the Xenia clip? Um, it was awesome. I, I shot a music video with her. Um, she's a DJ and she's super talented. And she's awesome, down to earth. And that was a lot of fun. I went to New York. Uh, it was cold, but the video turned out really, really, really cool. She's super talented. Can't wait to see what else she got coming out. Is there somewhere you, from Brandon Moore, is there somewhere you've never been that you'd like to visit? Um, I've never gone to... I mean, there's a bunch of places I've never gone to, but Brazil, in, in regards to Teen Wolf, um, we've, I've done a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of countries we haven't made it to, but Brazil is one of the biggest, we have a huge fan base there, and some of the actors have done there, have gone there, I never have, and, and, and if you talk to anyone who's gone there for a convention in Brazil, they say it's bananas, uh, in the best way, craziest way possible, it's just insanity. Uh, and I would like to experience that. So I, I haven't done Brazil, um, so I'd like to do that. But uh, but I hear it's I hear it's it's a trip. So you gotta you know, uh, yes. Let's see. Uh, am I a fan of Doctor Who from Turtle Boy? I like Doctor Who. Uh, I'm not a huge fan, uh, but I like the show. I watch it. Um, like I said, I'm a huge Game of Thrones fan. Um, there's certain, there's certain, sh I like, I, I watch a lot of shows, um, and I only have, like, I don't know, I, it's, it's, I guess I watch so much that when someone asks me, like, are you a fan? I like their shows, I appreciate it, it's entertaining. Um, there's not many shows I'm a huge fan of, uh, just because I guess I watch so much, I don't know. Um, it's 1.30 in France. I want to sleep, but I'm enjoying this too much. No, go to bed! Thank you so much for the support, but if it's 1.30, go to bed. If you, it's, it's, oh, Saturday. Ah, oh, you get Sunday tomorrow, right? You good? No, go to sleep. Um, oh, actually, it might be Sunday there already, right? Thank you, guys. Any of you who are tuning in from all across the world and you're up at random hours, thank you, guys. Appreciate this. Please go to sleep. I'm gonna. I'll be. This is just a test. Like I said, I'm gonna be figuring something out to do more of this. Uh, I really enjoy this aspect of the internet. Um, it's. I really. I, I. I really like Instagram and doing pictures and things like that. But it's not as you don't get to connect as much. Um, so this is why I wanted to test something like this, and going forward, I might figure out something else to where, you know, I can get it going on a more regular basis, um, because I love this. I love, you guys are the reason why I'm an actor, uh, why I have a job, let's put it that way. You guys support me and allow me to pursue my dreams. You guys made it possible that I was on Teen Wolf. Um, if, if, if I showed up on Teen Wolf as Parrish season, when I first showed up, and you guys hated it, I would have been written off, or I wouldn't have been. It wouldn't. The role wouldn't have expanded as much. You guys are a huge reason why Parrish expanded to the role that he did. So I, I owe you guys a lot. Um, the love and support that you guys show us is incredible, and we can't thank you enough. 
So taking time to do things like this where I can actually interact with some of you. I know it's not as much as I would like. That's why I really like conventions because I get to meet you in person. Um, am I going to go to San Diego Comic Con? I'm going to try. I'm going to try this year. Normally I, I, I haven't been able to make it. But um, I like conventions because I get to meet you guys in person. And that's really where the connections are. You know, a lot of you guys, I'm sure some of you guys are on here right now. I, I'm terrible with names. I'm good with faces. And also it's like, you know, we're doing people's names. Like Courtney, 912. Uh, you know, like I, I don't, you know, you, like they're internet names. I don't, I don't know your face. But in, in conventions, I get to meet you. Um, and it's really cool to be able to do things like that and get to talk with you and see your guys' excitement uh, firsthand. And hopefully when the people that have met me, or hopefully you can tell a little bit through this screen, my phone, that, you know, we're genuine and we do appreciate that what you guys do for us and that it's not fake. We, we, we want to please you guys. We want to make you happy. You know, obviously there's limitations. Like I said, we can't, we can't be doing everything for everyone. We can't make videos for everyone. I'd be, that'd be a full-time job. And sadly, I wish I could for everyone, but if I could clone myself, I would do it. But you know, I have, I have a life. I have, you know, when we're working, things, traveling, it's just impossible. And so, but I, we want you guys to know we appreciate you. And, and, and the reason we are doing what we do is because of you guys. So thank you guys. Thank you for guys for tuning in, the ones that are, please go to sleep. If, you, if it's late, go to sleep. I promise you I will do more of these. In some way, shape, or form, there'll be another way. You can ask questions another time. Get sleep. Appreciate you guys showing love. Go to bed. Uh, and for the ones that are still up with me, thank you guys. Let's, let's get back to more questions. Uh, will you come to Arizona from Courtney J92 Arizona? That's funny that you mentioned that. I'm coming. I'm going to uh, Tucson soon. That's that's random that you asked that. Uh, what's your favorite video game on PlayStation? I don't have PlayStation. Uh, my favorite video games. I'll answer that. Are I play on on the computer. I play a lot of like PUBG. If you guys know what that is, Dota. Uh, just random games. Games that I can play with my friends. Anything that uh, I don't know if you guys know. It's like it's sort of like a chat thing like this. It's called Discord, or it's like Skype. And, you know, I log on with my friends, and we talk. We, we talk crap to each other, and we play games, and it's fun. Um, remember remember the Brazilian fans always? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I need to go to Brazil. I, I want to see how crazy you guys are and, and how intense. Uh, can you tell us details about NCIS? L.A. Um I, I, I mentioned it a little bit earlier. It's, it was just a little thing I did, super teeny, nothing. Don't get your hopes up on anything crazy. I just, it was right for the holidays. I wasn't doing anything, and, and I got to do a cool little guest spot um, and, and do some fun little scenes with Chris O'Donnell. Um, it was pretty cool. Short, simple, just a guest spot, nothing crazy. Um, but, yeah, it was a lot of fun. That show was, you know, it's been on their, their ninth season, and they're a well-oiled machine, and they're all professional. And, you know, those LL Cool J and Chris O'Donnell, like, I've known those guys since I was a little kid, so being able to meet them and work with them was pretty cool. I love stuff like that. Uh, Leah, favorite actor or actress? My favorite actor is Leo, Leonardo DiCaprio. I think he's beyond talented. I also think Meryl Streep. I think they're both, I mean, they, they both blow my mind away. So they're probably, well, you know, in that order, or both one, I guess. Um... Uh, any co tips on confidence? <sighs> confidence. Um, tips on confidence. Uh, I, again, the best thing to be, the things to make you confident is being prepared. Uh, the best way to walk into any situation with the most confidence possible is being prepared. So when I walk into an audition and how I have confidence, and I don't trust me, I don't always have, I'm not always confident. There are times where I'm nervous, there are times where I'm scared. There's situations where I pretend to be confident, but I'm not. Um, and, but the, the way to mitigate those feelings is to be prepared. Um, so if you have to speak in front of a, a crowd and it's a, and it's a, a speech, Go over that speech a million times before you do that. Know it like the back of your hand. So that if you do mess up or you are nervous, you know it so well that you don't even, you're not lost. Um, sort of like the same thing with auditions. Like if I know, if I'm, if I'm the most prepared in that room, if I screw up, it doesn't matter because I'm, I'm going to recover so quick or I can, you know, I don't have to worry about forgetting things because I can worry about other things. I can worry about 
how the director is not making eye contact with me and looks like he's not interested. I can worry about things like that when I know the script and don't have to worry about that. So to be confident is to be prepared. Um, and do your best. You know, you can't always be. There's, there's situations where we're put in where you can't be prepared or, or it's last minute and things like that. And the best thing to do is just know, like, the, what's the worst that could happen? Think about it. What's the worst that could happen? They can reject you? Cool. I mean, it wasn't meant to be. Something else will happen. Um, you know, no one likes to be rejected, don't get me wrong, but if you really s stop and think about it, you have your health, you have your friends and family, that thing didn't work out, something else will. It's not the end of the world. So to be confident is just to, I don't want to say not care, because you should care, but it's just be prepared and and know that if this one doesn't work out, you know, just breathe, like it's not, don't make, don't get yourself so worked up. Know so there are other opportunities that will happen if that one doesn't work. Um, my favorite, I just read once, my favorite Shelly moment, or a scene with Shelly, or a moment with Shelly. Uh, that girl is one of my favorite people in the entire world, uh, in terms of just personality. She, uh, she, she's, I have too many too many memories with her that are just too funny. Um, just com random conversations that I've had with her where she'll say things that you just don't expect and that come out of her and you're just, you're just dying laughing because she's hilarious. She is way funnier than, like on the, sh on the show, uh, Malia's hilarious. But it's a different type of humor because it's more... You know, she's like that person who says no matter what, says anything no matter what, like the awkward things that still, like, you know, we'd all like a friend that would be like that. You would never want to be the person to be, to say things like that, like, your shirt's ugly. You know, like, she just said things that she didn't have that filter, you know. Um, and that humor is hilarious, and Shelly killed it. But in real life, she's t that even funnier. She's just pretty funny. So I had too many moments of just sitting around in our cast chairs or being in our trailers just where she would just say... Hilarious things having me laughing. She's amazing. Um, all right. Would you direct an episode? Or wait, would you direct an episode or a TV series? Um, one day. Uh, so Posey and uh, Lyndon directed uh, two, an episode each in our last season, uh, as you guys probably know, and they did an amazing job. It's a lot of work. It really, especially if you're acting in it, and then, you know, and then to. Um, to be directing and you're doing double the, double the amount of work um, it's not something directing isn't something I'm super passionate about I love acting and right now I like focusing on that um, turn this down this game right. um, I love focusing on that so I don't have any future plans to direct at the moment someday it could happen you know like I'm not sure if Posey when he was younger thought that he'd be directing but he did um, so if the right moment came up and, and I had the right support system, that was a cool thing for them too. They directed on Teen Wolf where, where, you know, we knew everyone and it's comforting and, and even if you screwed up, which they didn't, but if you did, if I screwed up, it's not the end of the world. You have a support system, whereas directing something new would be terrifying for me. That would be the confidence thing. I would have to, I would have to shadow a director first and make sure I know, cross my T's and dot my I's, make sure I'm the most prepared possible so I don't screw up and let people down. Um... We miss you in the Netherlands. I miss the Netherlands. Would you like... Uh, would you like to make a new friend actor? Uh, I'm always down to make new friends. They don't have to be actors. Um, most of my friends uh, aren't actors. Ah, I take that back. <laughs> I, have a lot of, <laughs> I have a lot of actor friends. I have a lot of friends that aren't actors, and I have a lot of friends that are actors. You can't help... You can't not have friends in the business when you're in it, you know, uh, as an actor, you have a lot of, you, at times you have a lot of free time. Most people in my life have nine to fives, you know, Monday through Friday, you work eight to six or whatever, you know, how it is in the business world or the real world. Uh, as an actor, it's random. So when you're off on a Tuesday, you know, and you try to hit up your friends and like, no, I'm at work. You're like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. And you have to call your actor friends. Like, what are you doing? Nothing. <laughs> Perfect. Want to hang out? Uh, so, so yeah, I'm always down to make new friends. Who's the funniest to hang out with? I'm assuming you're referring to Teen Wolf. Um, everyone's hilarious in their own way. The the, uh, the show is just filled with people with personalities. Um, Sprayberry, I mean, is hilarious. Uh, Sprayberry and Kylan together are they'll they'll have you dying laughing. Um, you get Posey and and O'Brien together, and and they'll make you cry. I mean, it's just it's it, it's it's 
more entertaining when you get people together. That's when it's trouble. So if you say, for instance, you got Ian and JR together, or, or Ian and, and Hecklin together, like they will just, just the reaction, what they do themselves to each other is so funny. Um, I'm sure you guys have, no, the ones that have been to conventions, when you see us on stage and you see certain people click or say things, they're just hilarious. So individually, they're all funny, but together is when, when you'll pee your pants. Um, and, and some of them are just, I mean, they're just a riot, as you guys know. They're just funny, funny, funny people. Can you sing for us? You do not want me to sing. I promise you that. I will break your phone's speakers and your computers will just crash and you don't need it. You don't want that. Favorite superhero? Uh, it used to be Spider-Man when I was a kid. Now, I don't know. I guess Spider-Man, Wolverine. I like, you know, I got Batman. I like Batman. Um... Do I remember the girl who cried at WolfCon? I do. That's you? Crazy. Small world. <laughs> do I like anime? I love anime. Um, there's a website called Crunchyroll where you can watch a bunch of free stuff. Uh, and I watch a bunch of stuff like there, like the new Dragon Ball stuff uh, and some other things. That my roommate's really big into it, and he gets me into shows that gets me hooked. What was your favorite cartoon as a kid? Uh, X-Men. I think X-Men. X-Men or Spider-Man was something that, as a kid I watched... Uh, religiously I, we had these like I had an unfurnished basement growing up which means it wasn't wasn't like you could see the, the, the stuff in the walls like the pipes the water pipes you could see throughout all the ceiling our basement wasn't finished and as a kid I used to swing on those pipes and pretend I was Spider-Man and my dad would always scream at me saying that I was going to break the pipes or like you know if I busted one of those pipes the water goes everywhere sewage water or regular water I, I don't know I never broke one thankfully but my, my dad used to scream at me. I remember one time I was like, I was in it. I had just finished watching Spider-Man and I was swinging around the basement having the time of my life as a kid and I got spanked on the butt behind from my dad. I didn't even hear him coming and uh, ruined my fun. Ruined all my fun. All right. You tattooed my autograph from Brussels. I remember that. I remember that. That's, that's, that's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, how do you not be angry when sad? How, how am I not angry when sad? Um, how am I not angry when I'm sad? Uh, I don't get angry when I'm sad. When I'm sad, I get sad. And I talked about it earlier. I try to do things that make me... Trust me, there are definite days where you're just in a sad mood. You can't... There's no secret to getting out of a funk. If you're sad or you're depressed for that day, you can do your best to get out of it. Um... But it's impossible. Like, you're, I, I can't sit here and tell you, like, to snap you out of it. Like, unless a miracle happened where your favorite actor showed up on your doorstep with, like, a gift or a free car, you know, you're not going to, you're going to be in that funk. And it's terrible. But you try to, what you try to do is not be mean or rude to other people. And sometimes I'm in a funk where I just have to tell, whoa, what is this? Someone just, a huge heart wings something whoever just did that that's really cool you don't need to please don't do, donate or do anything but that was really cool i don't know some eagle someone's portrait that was pretty cool um but yeah so if you're in a funk you know sometimes even with my roommate like and, it, and vice versa like sometimes i come out in the morning and he's in a bad mood like in like not you know like hey man what's up and like, he's like just you know like you can just tell like they don't want to be like, nothing you know and you let it you give them their space and vice versa like if it's me i need my space and maybe you, you just try to not take it out on them because it's so easy, especially when I was a kid, to take it out on my mom. You know, like my mom or my dad, if I was in a bad mood, to, to snap at them or to be rude to them. And it's not their fault. Obviously, in your mind, they're being annoying or if they're, they're, they're asking you too many questions when you really don't want to talk about it. So you just got to pull yourself away, try to reset, and then also just go to bed and sleep on it and try to wake up in a better. And like I said, it might not be better the next day, but it will get better. All right. What's your motto in life? What's my motto in life? Um, I don't always practice it, you know, but we're not, we're a human. I screw up from time to time, all the time. Um, hi, Lynn. And my favorite bad guy from Teen Wolf is Peter, I think. Um, but my favorite, my motto, you know, is I, I try to live, I don't want to say, when I was younger, it was more like live every day like it's your last. You know, as I've gotten older, you, you, you have to plan a little bit more, but I still like to do that. Like live today, like, like it's your last, like 
It doesn't mean be irresponsible or do things that are dumb or hurting people, but you don't you do not know when our lives are going to end or when whatever like and it might not even be you like your friends or animals or family or you know a house that you're living in or anything like and anything can end so enjoy it while you have it you just never know um be thankful for what you have don't take it for granted we've all we've all i i do this all the time whether it's past relationships or other things i've taken them for granted friends family uh, i took it for granted when i was younger i wanted to get as far away from my parents as possible now i i wish more than anything i could be back home living with them but i live in los angeles and i have to be in los angeles but I, I, I miss them, and I wish I wish I enjoy, I wish I knew what I knew now. I mean, that's people say that all the time. Like, as you get older, you get wiser, um, and uh, so just live today like you're going You could potentially not be here tomorrow, uh, and that's pretty. You know, again, don't be irresponsible, but just enjoy the people around you. Don't take things too seriously. Like, if you knew you were gonna die tomorrow or die in a week, the little things in life that that make you upset wouldn't stress you out as much I promise you <laughs> if you knew you, were, you only had a month left you wouldn't care I don't think you'd even care if your parents didn't buy you a shirt that you wanted like you know there's it's priorities and it's it's putting yourself in that mindset and we've done some really cool things with Team Wolf where I've met some incredible powerful people who didn't have long to live and they were ten times more positive on life than I was and that was a shock um and it was something I needed to learn, see and learn and, for, and, and experience firsthand because if someone, you know, it, you just meet certain people in life and they show you that life is so precious and it's so important to enjoy every moment. And that's a good motto. That's, I'll leave it at that. Um, where do you see yourself in about five years from Psyche? Psyche? Silk. Silk. Um, where do I see myself in five years? Um... Uh, it's <laughs> a good question. Um, I, you know, the hope is I'm on some show and and the sh and the fan base is as uh, loving and, and and powerful as the fans on Team Wolf. Um, I, I hope I'm working. You never know, though. Like, you know, acting might I might get out of acting. I might do something else. You just never know. It's uh, that's the craziest thing about being an actor is it's the, your future is uncertain. So as long as I'm around loved ones. I don't care what I'm doing. Um, I just hope I'm around people I care about. Uh, I hope I'm acting, but if not, it's because I've moved on for a reason. Um, all right. Uh, sorry, sorry, it's on again too longer. Uh, supporting each other is the best. Where is it? Ah, every time you guys type, it makes me. Supporting, wow! Supporting each other is the best we can do. Yep. Um, two hours later, and you're still streaming. Yeah, I told you guys I was going to stream for a little bit. Um, again, for the people that are new, I'm just testing this out. Please don't spend money. Don't donate anything to me. Just, just ask questions. Enjoy this stream. Uh, hang out. Do whatever. I'm just testing. I'm not being paid to do this. I just wanted to test out a streaming service and see how it happens, and and also answer some of your guys' questions. And this is you guys blew me away with with the support. Um, I, I didn't think it was going to be this crazy. Honestly, I thought I was going to have like 30 people because you had to download the app. I don't know. This is awesome. I can't thank you guys enough. You guys, again, are, are blow me away on a constant basis. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I'm going to try to, like, I'm going to figure out some way, shape, or form to do this in a more normal capacity because um, I really enjoy this. And I think you guys like it. And the, the more I do it, the more I'll actually be able to get to your questions. And, and I, I, I need to figure out again. This is my first time, so I apologize. It's I I, I did a test run a couple days ago, and it was not like this because I didn't have you guys' chat, so it wasn't this crazy. So I thought it was going to be easy, um, and then I did a little test earlier. Um, so I apologize. I was telling you guys about being prepared, and then I I'm looking here looking foolish. I apologize. I didn't I didn't plan on the the chat being so crazy. Um, that's why I, I have my phone, which is what it's streaming on, and then I have my computer behind it, and that's what I thought I was being prepared. It's like, oh, I got this. I'm going to read the, be able to read the chat, and it's going to be perfect. You guys are chatting so much, which is awesome. Um, it's and but normally you can like hold the chat thing and it stays. It's not letting me. Every time you go, it still goes. Um, but again, thank you guys for the love and support. I'm going to figure out a way to do this on a. I'm going to figure out to, to do this more. So if you guys have to go, if you're tired, if, you know, there's going to be more of this. I promise you guys. 
you've met a big part of the Teen Wolf cast, and now uh, you're my most beautiful meeting. Oh, well, thank you. I hope I get to meet you. I hope you've met me in person, and if not, I hope I get to meet you one day. What's my favorite pizza topping? Sausage. Actually, uh, I like like supreme pizzas, but if I had to pick one, it'd be sausage. I don't like pepperoni. I don't hate it, but it's just, I'm never, never a huge, um, never a huge pepperoni person. Uh, do you want to have children? Yeah, I want to have children. I want to, so I have nine adopted siblings. I do want to adopt. Um, I also want to see, like, I would love to see, I, I look like my dad, like when he was a kid, like how I grew up, I was like a spitting Im- image of my dad. I'm nothing like him, which is funny, but I look a lot like him. So it, I think it'd be funny to watch, you know, I think that's the cool thing about having children is you get to see yourself grow up. Uh, and, 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 you know, we all make mistakes. I've made plenty of mistakes in life. So if my kid is making mistakes, obviously I'm going to, you know, like I wonder as I get older, like, I wonder how often my parents were laughing in their head, but they're mad at me. But like, I wonder in the back of their head, they're like, I did stuff like that. Bad, Ryan, bad, you know, but in their head, they're laughing. I, I can't wait to have those experiences be like, your son did what? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I did that, you know, like stuff like that. So I definitely want kids. What's my favorite season? Number one, I said this earlier. I wasn't even a part of it, which is crazy. Uh, but this, this season one is, is, um, season one is what started it all. The, the, the Styles and, and Scott bromance. And, and, and I watched the season before I was ever on it and it got me hooked on Team Wolf. I, I appreciated Team Wolf as a show before I was ever on it. Um, what was my first convention? Uh, oh, I don't even know. It's been so long now. I think my first convention, you guys might know. Uh, I have no idea. One of my first, one of my, in the earlier stages was one that was in Los Angeles. And I remember I did it with Megan Tandy, who was her first convention. Um, yeah. So I remember that one. Bitcoin or Bitcoin, but Bitcoin, Bitcoin. Uh, why did I say Bitcoin? Can't read. Uh, yeah, it might have been BiteCon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, will I follow you on Instagram? Same name. I can't, because if I follow you, I gotta follow everyone. And there's a million people in here. And, and also, like, it's that thing where if I do it once and I start, it's, I've done it in random times. We do it, some actors, like, for special occasions, but if I can't, I can't, I, I don't want you to be offended. Please don't be offended. It's not that there's nothing against you, but if I do it for you, then I gotta do it for everyone. And normally we do it for, certain reasons like uh when we do charity things or things like that um and try to make it more special than just saying hey follow me um again it's nothing personal it's just when you're on a show when you have 1.5 or some heckling or someone has millions millions more than me you can't follow everyone it's impossible do you like 80s music i do i like 80s music uh how do you make an impossible dream come true <sighs> um I sort of, I guess, preparation, sort of what I was talking about, just hard work. You know, same thing with acting. Like, there's a lot of luck involved in acting, but it's when hard work meets preparation and the right time. Like, if you get your opportunity and you're not ready for that opportunity, you're going to screw it up. So if you get an opportunity but you're ready for it, um, you, you have the best chance of succeeding. So being prepared for an impossible dream or an opportunity is the best way to make that happen. Imagine... Imagine, it's like me, uh, like my dream role, my dream audition, getting the audition, and I'm not ready. I don't know my sides. I don't know my material. I look like an idiot. Of course, they're not going to cast me. But being prepared, knowing all the things like the back of my head, going in there, knocking their socks off, whether I get that role or not, I feel good about myself because I was prepared. I gave it my all. And if I don't get it, I can't be upset because I did my best. As long as you do your best, what, what more can you do? You know, you're not going to get everything. You're not going to, not everything is possible. Uh, let's see, let's scroll down and find some. What's my favorite movie? My favorite movie of all time? I have, there's too many to pick, but one I always go to that I would say uh, is a movie called Crash. I just really like the, the way I saw it and the experience um, and the writing and the acting in it. It's movie Crash. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's amazing. Um, it was me you hugged. Wait, wait, wait. It was me you hugged after it, so thank you for it. Awesome. Uh, I still have my Parking with Paris sh- shirt from Andrea. Yes! Good. Those are my favorite shirts to see. Obviously, it was me, but awesome. I'm glad. I wish I could give you a hug. I told anyone who I see with my shirt on, I give them a hug. Um, what's your favorite Disney princess? <laughs> She's right there. It's uh, Jasmine. 
that, that jasmine was given to me by a fan at a convention. Um, all right. Do you watch Harry Potter? I did. I love Harry Potter. Wish I was cast in that. That would have been a would have been a nice nice career boost. Have you ever had big depression? Uh, yeah, I'm going through. I mean, I haven't had clinical depression, um, but I've gone through depression. Um, will I come to Gilbert, Arizona? I don't know where that is. Where is that? Obviously, it's in Arizona. Uh, how far from LA? Um, but in terms of being depressed, yeah. I mean, have you ever gone through a breakup? Have you ever gone through? Have you ever lost a loved one? Uh, I can say yes to both of those, and and I can tell you, you know, it's some of the hardest things in the world is losing someone you care about, whether they pass on or they just you break up. Um, love is the best and worst thing in this world, in my opinion. And it can put you, it can make even the most confident people crazy. And uh, and like I said, the way to get through that for me, everyone's different, but for me, it's taking it one day at a time. Knowing it'll get better. Knowing maybe not tomorrow, maybe not today, maybe not in a week, but just get through this. One day at a time, slowly it will get better. You're going to pull through. It, it, you just will. Nothing lasts forever, and feelings can change, and, and, and some of the things that make you depressed for whatever it is, you know, school reasons or, or, or whatever, you can, you can, your brain can reset. You just need time. You know, the, the, the old saying of time heals all wounds is true. <laughs> it really is. Um, I've gone through a couple breakups, um, and if I look back on my first breakup that I was devastated with, you know, or, or if I look back on when someone in my family member that, that passed away, I thought... This feeling was going to last for forever, and it's not that I don't remember them, and I, do, and I still love them more than anything, but the, the pain of them going away is gone. They're, they're wherever they are now, and life, life goes on, and, and, you've, and you adapt. Um, so to deal with depression is just one day at a time. Don't worry about six months from now. Get through today. And get through tomorrow, and, and it'll, it'll, it'll get better, I promise. Do I have Snapchat? I do not have Snapchat. I have Instagram. I have Twitter. And I have Facebook. Um, yeah, I don't. I, I, I never got into Snapchat. It's not. It's not really my thing. Um, I'm very insightful. Well, thank you. I mean, this is again. Whatever I say is just my opinion. Uh, you know what works for me. Like I said, when I'm depressed, I go to the movies. Some people might go to the movies and be like, "This stinks." Some people don't like the movies. Movies transform me. They. They. It's my favorite thing. That's why I'm an actor. So that's what gets me out of it, like a funk. I go to the movies or I watch a television show. I shut my room and just listen and, and, and my, ah. Um, but for some people, it's music. For some people, it's friends. For some people, it's charity work. For some people, it's reading a book. You just got to find what you, what, what you love. And if you don't have something you love, you need to find it. Um, and that just, that just takes time, you know? Like you got to, you, you, you have to put in the effort, you know? And, and there's a lot of things out there that you probably haven't experienced or tried. Um, and just do it, you know, some people it's food, you know, go, go treat yourself to a special dinner, you know, even if it's just you, who cares if you look like a loser sitting alone, I sit in movies all the time by myself alone, people have even cracked jokes, like, I don't know, I, I don't know if they're just messing with me or whatever, like, like, oh, you're alone, you know, like, yeah, whatever, I don't care, like, yeah, I'm, I'm here to enjoy the movie by myself, so I've eaten alone, I've traveled alone, no one wants to be alone, but at the same time, sometimes I do want to be alone because it's what helps me get away from people. And no matter your best friend in the world or your parents who you love more than anything, sometimes annoy the heck out of you. You know, like my cats sometimes annoy the heck out of me. They meow. They're, they're needy, and you're like, ah, I just need five minutes alone. You know, everyone needs their space. So you just got to be good at dealing with that and not being rude to other people and learning to make that, you know, to 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 see it coming and then just take your time, walk away. Uh, nothing, nothing wrong with going to the movies on your own. Yeah, no, I do it all the time. But you know, people crack jokes. I, I, I've literally been in the theater where people have made jokes to me. Um, and again, I don't care. I find it funny. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> uh, do you like musicals? Um, I like watching musicals. I don't like being in them. I, I don't sing. I don't dance. Uh, I just, I, I enjoy watching them. That's <laughs> they're not for me. I'm not talented enough. Uh, do I like potatoes? I do like potatoes. Do you like potatoes? Can you please say te amo? Oh no, way to go. Wait. Te amo uh, Gabriella. Te amo Gabriella. Gabriella. See, I'm the worst with repeating. Uh, 
how was filming the music video with uh, I think I answered that already it was amazing she's super talented with Xenia Galia she's beyond I mean that, that music video is awesome we were in New York it's a little bit cold but she's super cool and and, um, and like I said I can't wait to see what more stuff she comes out with hopefully I get to do something with her again um, have you ever cried after whoa whoa whoa, whoa. where'd that go have I ever cried after was it making a mis ah where'd it go have I ever cried after a mistake after mistaking a scene after like a mistake in a scene um, no but I've definitely this is like an actor's nightmare for whatever reason there's a word or a sentence or a, a cue that you just can't remember everyone else can remember it like say we're talking we're doing scenes and you know I'm supposed to say I don't know no Batman not today I mean that's simple but you just there are times where your brain just goes blank and you can't remember it and then once you get flustered it's just like, have you ever, it's like when something's on the tip of your tongue, it's there, but you can't, like, you're making it harder and you're not going to remember it because you're thinking about it too much, and then if you stop, like, an hour later, you're like, oh, Batman, you're like, you know, you couldn't remember it, but it's the same thing with acting, when, when you're doing a scene and, and you start screwing up, well, okay, you screw up, I'm a professional, I got this you start screwing up again, or you can't remember the words, then your brain goes into panic mode, like, why can't I get this, what's going on, uh, uh, and then you do it again, and it's just, and you're like, uh, sorry guys. And that's like an actor's nightmare. It was when, when you're around people you respect, and you're screwing up, making the cast and crew wait because you keep screwing up. It happens to all of us. It happens. I mean, even camera crews, they're not remembering lines, but sometimes they screw up their things. Like everyone makes mistakes in life. Everyone makes mistakes, so you have to know that. Um, you know, it again. There's a difference between making a mistake that's an actual mistake or someone just not being prepared. And we all know when someone's not prepared, those people stink. And it stinks when someone's not prepared and you pay the price for it. But if it's a genuine mistake, it happens. No one likes it to be you. It's terrifying, especially when you can't get through a scene. It's very frustrating. Um, I've never cried from it, but uh, I've wanted to cry. <laughs> it's, I mean, I've, I've, done, I've gone on shows where I'm new and, you're, and like for whatever reason I screwed up. That's a terrible feeling because at least on Team Wolf, if I screw up, we're all friends. We, they, everyone knows me. They know I'm a hard worker. They know I'm not being, I wasn't prepared. I was prepared. I'm just, for whatever reason, we're having a mind blank. Uh, but I've gone on new day, like, I, it happened to me once where I was on a show. And uh, for whatever reason, the word just wasn't coming to me. And, uh, and I didn't know the actors. And uh, that's, that was a bad feeling because I was like, oh, they're looking at me like I'm terrible. Oh. What was your favorite live band? Uh... For a while, like one of my favorite live bands that I saw a bunch of times was Twenty One Pilots. I'm sure you guys know who they are. Um, I love their concerts. It, they do. They're super interactive, um, and they like run around the stadium and like, you know, at one point he's singing in this part of the fans, and they're on a ball over here. They at, at the end they're on like a drum. It's just like very. He even said it at one point. I saw in an interview. Uh, he likes to think. What fans want to see and like when he's at a con at a concert what he wants to see and he tries to do that which I think is awesome and I think that's why I saw them live didn't know who they were a friend took me to them and I was blown away and I was like who are these guys and I listened to their music and I was amazed at it their lyrics are incredibly it just resonate um, and uh, and then I've seen them a bunch of times since a perfect day for Ryan would be like I sleep in not too late you know nine o'clock Nine o'clock, eight, eight, nine. You know, not early. Get up, have breakfast. I've got loving kitty cats just wanting cuddles. My cats don't always want cuddles. Cats sometimes do, sometimes don't. But in this day, they just want cuddles. I, I mean, a real perfect day would be like playing with monkeys. But that's you know that's too extreme. Monkeys or gorillas, you know, that's too extreme. A, a reasonable day would be then going to lunch out to lunch with with friends family that I care about um, going home seeing a movie a good movie not just any movie like a, a real good movie and then at night again dinner um, and some sort of activity with loved ones um, you know maybe maybe cocktails with with you know, some of my older siblings or something like that. nothing crazy just talking getting you know things like that being around loved ones I love that's why I love the holidays it's slow which is never fun, but you do get to spend a lot of time. I have nieces and nephews and, and siblings, um, and getting to go home and just hanging out with them. Um, 
I went out to have pizza slices with him, or my younger siblings, like, I don't know if you guys know what Top Golf is, or, or bowling, bowling, you know, going bowling with my younger siblings, getting to know them, keeping, keeping me in their life, vice versa. Same thing with friends, like keeping friends that you care about. It's important. So a perfect day would just be around loved ones. And um, no drama, no stress. Man, I keep getting these notes. You guys are amazing. Thank you guys. You guys are sending me so much stuff. Magic wands. and Guys, save your magic wands. I don't know if that costs money or not. Or the pizzas and things like that. Please do not spend money on me. This is, I'm not being paid to do this. I'm just testing. I'm here to go see the greatest showman. Okay, I'm going to go see it. I'm going to see that. Uh, can you say hi to my friend Anne from Germany? Hi, Anne from Germany. Uh, do you believe in soulmates? Uh... I do believe in soulmates. I believe that people can have more than one soulmate, but I definitely think certain people are drawn to each other more than others. Say hi to Sylvia. Is that Sylvia? It went up so quick. I'm so sorry. Happy birthday, Amy. Um, we get some questions. I miss Teen Wolf too, guys. Trust me, I miss it. I miss it for the craft services. I miss it because I used to get to hang out with all my friends and we used to just make funny skits that you guys would watch on Teen Wolf. Um, have you been to Scotland? No, I have not. It's been so... That is one of the places that's been on my list three times. And and two of those times I had plane tickets and everything. I was supposed to go. And I can't tell you how excited I was. Um, and because of filming or something, I had to cancel my plans. Three times. Two of those were like set in stone. And it was, uh, it was, it was rough. When I, especially that second time. The second time after having a second plan to go and it being ruined again by filming, I had to rush back to I booked a job. I was like, ah. I will get there, I promise. Do you believe in life after death? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm more agnostic on things. I, you know, I believe there could, like, if there's a door, this is the way they put it, I believe there could be something on the door. I just don't know. I, I haven't seen it. Um, I don't believe that there's not anything there, but I don't believe, like, I just sort of believe in a lot of things. I, I think a lot of things are possible. I just think you should be a good human being and treat people how you want to be treated, whether whatever your religion is, just be a good person. And if there is an afterlife, you're going to go there if you're a good person. And if there's not, then we'll end up as energy some way, shape, or form. <laughs> or you're just darkness, just like this. Darkness. <laughs> not really, that's, that's dark. Uh, what's your favorite country you've been to so far? Recently, Thailand was one of my favorites, just because I spent a lot of time there. I, I, every country I go to is, every country you go to is amazing, because it's different than where I'm from and getting to see people and that's the beauty about traveling is you get to see people that have beliefs that are so different than you that eat food that's so different than you that think about the world so different than you I'm American and you guys uh, I'm sure have your if you are American or you aren't American you guys know Americans are known for whatever their opinions or things like that when you get to travel the world you get to meet other people and and their ideas on life and ways of living or it's just different and it's awesome to get to travel because you get a perspective that is not yours and I think that's extremely important not everyone can travel you can be open minded and not travel but it does help to travel to meet people there are people that have told me things um, that I would have never thought about and I don't necessarily think that that's how you should live but I don't think it's not I think like that works for them and the way that they live like that's amazing I would have never thought like that um, but it's not for me and and it just opens you up. And I feel like traveling the world has made me super open-minded. Like, as long as you're not hurting someone, you're not, you know, more power to you. And it's sort of my philosophy in a lot of things. Like, I, I like meeting new people. I like hearing their beliefs. I like ma figuring out what makes them tick because they're, they're, they're just, everyone is different. And that's cool. My least favorite season, uh, season two. I didn't, I don't know, I just, I just, that's a go-to answer that I have. Um, I wasn't in season two, and it wasn't season one, so, fuck season two. Uh, something about math. Uh, what's your favorite math topic in high school? I hated all math. I'm terrible. Thank God for phones, because my calculator makes me, makes me smart. People say things, and I'm like, two plus two? Four. Like, I, I'm, I... I was an actor my whole life. I was never in school. I mean, I was, but I never took it that seriously. I mean, I did, but like math, I was terrible at. Hate all math. Also, why did I have to learn? I mean, some of the stuff is important, but there's a lot of things I didn't like. There's certain math classes that I took that don't relate to my life, 
any way, shape, or form. Why did I learn those? Why did I stress to get an A or even a B or go see tutors for things? Ah, <laughs> school, man, school. Uh, do you remember the marry, marry me pose with Shell? I think so. Um, are you working on... Oh, man, you guys are amazing, but... It's, uh, do I, did I read your the tattoo about... Where'd that go? About the star? Yeah, it went up too fast, but yes. Yes, I read I read all letters. I promise you. When you guys send me a letter, or definitely at the conventions, I 100% I, I read them. Um, and I can't thank you guys enough for them, so thank you. My biggest dream. My biggest dream would be... I mean, like a, a, a realistic dream is to, you know, pay off your parents' debt or buy them a house, you know, let them retire. Uh, I think we can all sort of relate to that. How cool would it be to, to have your parents raise you and then you can make them retire like uh, that would that's that would be a realistic dream but like a crazy dream is like to own an island and have homes and things to set up there to help people you know <laughs> it doesn't have to be an island you could do that not an island i want an island but it meaning like something i want to do someday if i had the money it's, it would cost insane amounts of money but obviously i have uh, a close relationship with foster parenting and adoption because of my family um, everyone has their own causes. Some people, I'm also huge into animals, but it doesn't have to be, you know, find a charity that you're into. And one thing I would love to do is, uh, you know, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but you know, if you're in the foster system, foster care system at 18, you're let out. And sometimes a lot of times you're not equipped to just be tossed into the world. You know, you, you it's terrible. And, and the system is set up. It's, it just needs to be better. So I would love to own like an apartment complex, a huge apartment complex where, you know, kids that are freshly out of the system don't have to pay rent. You know, they have certain rules that they have to follow. They have to good, be good people. They have to find a job. But they don't have to pay rent. Maybe I even have, like, a cafeteria where I can feed them as well. And they get to, you know, get their feet on the ground in the right way with the right people helping them rather than just thrown out in the wolves. Um, that would be, like, a real dream. But that's a lot of money. Um, that would be – but that would be awesome. Um, I, I love stuff like that. Uh, if I could change something in my life, what would I change? I would make it that I could be an actor in Chicago. <laughs> uh, again, family is extremely important to me. When I was younger, when I was 18 years old, I wanted to move to LA to get away from my family because I thought, you know, I lived at home my whole life and I was, I, I, you know, I thought my parents were out to get me and, and that I needed to go off in the world and explore things. And as I've gotten older, you know, my parents were just looking out for me. They're loving. I love my mom and my dad. I wish I could be home more. Um, but I live in Los Angeles and they live in Chicago. So it's it's not terrible. It's not like... Europe and LA, um, everything's doable, especially with technology now, but it's, you know, seeing someone in person is awesome. I would love to be able to see my nieces and nephews grow up more. Uh, bye bye from, uh, Jacqueline. Bye. Thanks for joining in. Uh, getting, getting my top college, uh, results next week. How do you control nerves? You don't <laughs> No, That's a pretty big thing. Um, um, you just got to try to not think about it. You got to distract yourself. Again, back to me, going to movies. Do things to distract yourself. If you sit and dwell about it, you're going to you're going to be a worry work. You're going to cause yourself you're going to get wrinkles. You're going to you just you just got to do things to try to forget about it. I know it's hard. It's easier said than done. I'm not no one is perfect at that. But just try to do things that are fun and entertaining for you. Be around friends, family, anything to just not make you think about that. Uh, I just saw is there a fear that I want to overcome? I'm deathly scared of spiders hate spiders. I have, over the years, learned to kill the spider if it's in my house, because if it disappears, that's like the scariest thing in the world for me. Like, if I see a big spider in my room and it runs under my bed and I can't find it, that is probably the worst case scenario in life for me. I don't want to be in that room. I don't want to try any clothes on. I don't want to, they're going to, I just think it's there all the time. I think it's like laying eggs in my eyeball at night. You know, I'm not into killing things, but if a spider's in my room, I have to kill it. And so I've learned, when I was younger, I used to freak and not, I couldn't even touch a spider. I'd just panic, scream for my dad. But so many times that thing would disappear, and it was much more hell. So I've learned now, first react, kill that thing, then I freak out. But if I, could, if I just wasn't scared of spiders, like I have friends who like will let spiders like, ugh, 
I don't. I just. Ugh, they're creepy. They're nasty. I wish I didn't care. I wish I was just like, oh, it's a spider. Pick it up. Put it outside. Nope, not for me. I'm deathly scared. They're just creepy little critters. I don't care about snakes. Just spiders. Have you ever been to Amsterdam? A bunch of times. Amsterdam is one of my favorite places. Could you send a kiss? Can you say hello to Christina, my my sister Rachel from Scotland? Oh, hi, hi Scotland, hi Christina and Rachel. Uh, is there any chance? Ah, you were the first actor to make me cry. Thank you for small, small, Smallville. I was so devastated. Yeah, right. I I was a little. Yeah. Smallville was uh, intense, so I'm glad that that made you cry. Um, that's funny that, you know, you've seen me, you know, when I was much smaller and then coming to Teen Wolf where, you know, over the years, it's just, it's just funny watching transformations. Like, if you can Google my name and just you can look at young Ryan Kelly, there's some really funny things. Um, all right, I'm just going to do this from time to time. Again, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm not being paid to do this, so please save your money. Don't be sending me any things. I, if you do, I appreciate it, but please, it's not needed, not at all. Save your money. Just ask questions. I'm here just hanging out, talking. Uh, this is way crazier than I thought. I, I was just testing out a streaming service. I'd like to you know, meet you guys. Um, I wish I could meet you all in person. I wish there was a way to somehow do that. We do conventions around the world, and I get to interact with you guys one-on-one -on -one at times, and it's just awesome. And so I'm trying to figure out a way to keep that going. Streaming is a way to do that. Um, this is much crazier than I anticipated. I tried prepping for this, and the chat is just... Uh, so I'm learning. This is my first time on it. I apologize again. It's a it's a trial base that I'm doing right here. So thank you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming and, and, and hanging out. Um, what about telling you guys a joke? I don't have jokes. The only jokes I remember are too terrible to say. I have a twisted sense of humor, and I find everything funny to a certain extent, you know, as long as it's relatively uh, appropriate. <laughs> Uh, but I, the only d jokes I ever remember are dirty, and and that just makes I don't I need to I need to remember like the cute ones like I can't even remember it. But you know like the the, the funny dad jokes that just like we're like huh I need I need a, I need a go to joke of that. Favorite food pizza probably. I like ice cream. I like all that stuff. Would you have wanted to be a werewolf in Teen Wolf? No, I'm a hellhound. Actually, no, I would have wanted to be a teen, uh, werewolf. I if, if I wouldn't have been a, if, if I was an alpha. Come on, who didn't want to be an alpha? Um, but trust me, that question, no, now I'm knowing I'm a hellhound, I love to be in a hellhound. But like I said, my biggest fear before I knew what Parrish was, was that I was going to be something useless. My, I, my joke was always my, like, Parrish, we need you to light up the room with your finger. And I'm like, and like, that's all I have. So like, you know, the beast would have just killed me, but I could light up a room. Like I was scared to have a power that wasn't going to be useful. Um, and thankfully Jeff Davis gave me a power where... For the most part, I was useful. At times, I was a problem, but Parrish was a badass, and being a hellhound was really cool. Um, yeah. What's my favorite animal? Kisses to Carl uh, and Daryl. My favorite animal... Man, sometimes I love elephants, but monkeys. I mean, monkeys are... Man, they're just incredible. I was at the zoo recently. I wish I had this picture. I was at the zoo, and they weren't monkeys. They were um, apes got to specify that or you know the, the the animal police will yell at me and the apes and they were swinging uh they were ba they were younger they weren't babies but they were like teenage monk apes teenage apes and they were swinging by where i guess the people at the zoo were and a man was showing them videos of themselves uh and other apes and they were a hundred percent holding his phone to the glass and i the monk the not monkey the ape was hanging there looking at the camera like this registering you could see its eyes like and then it would laugh like and then it would go away and then it would come back and then if he didn't have it on his phone it would be like pointing to his phone like show me again show me again and he would look and you could see it watching it and it was incredible like i was blown away like if you would have told me that story like telling you guys it's you have to see it in person because it was it was it was just like wow they're they're like humans like that i'm watching this ape register another ape and i asked the gentleman i was like what are you showing him he's showing him a picture of or a video of his grandpa that had passed away not that long ago, like a couple weeks ago. And, the, and the, the younger ape was registering it and watching it. Like, it was fascinating. Um, monkeys and apes are incredible. Love them. Uh, something about Colton. Would you like to be on a CW show with X-Men Colton or Hecklin? Yeah. Oh, man, I would love to be... I would more like to be on with Hecklin because I could see his butt in that, uh, in that suit. 
because I don't know if you guys have seen the pictures of it. It's massive. It's pretty special. Google the pictures. Uh, no, I would love... I never really worked with Colton. Um, he was on set a lot. He, I visited I visited before I was on Team Wolf. I knew Colton before. Uh, he's amazing. Um, and then when he came back, I was so bummed that he wasn't... That I wasn't... I didn't get to see him. I didn't get a scene with him. Um, but again, I saw him on set. It was cool. Um, but yeah, I would love to do... I'd love to do anything with anyone on Team Wolf. Like, being, like, if I could, I would get Team Wolf back together and we'd do more. Like, I, those people are my family. Like, I legitimately, actors always say this, and it's not always true. Um, oh, yeah, we love going to work. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes there are people, you know, certain actors that you hear about that are, I don't want to say crazy, they are difficult or unusual is the wording, and they make life on set sometimes hard. We didn't have any of those on Team Wolf. Uh, Jeff made it his mission and he legitimately like purposely hired people because of their personalities and did not want any drama on set so going to set I legitimately had fun every day I loved being on Team Wolf I, I, there were days where I didn't even work and I just showed up on set because I didn't have anything to do and I wanted to hang out with my friends I wanted to be around people that I respect and enjoyed being around um, Team Wolf was amazing I hope to God I get on another show with that same cast camaraderie and crew because it was something special which is hopefully what you guys saw. That's why I think it did so well, it's because of the fans and it's just something special that we had going on. Uh, is there any chance you'd like to come to Egypt one day? I would love to come to Egypt one day, 100%. I, I, it's, on, it's on my to-do list. I have a convention there. Get me out there sooner. Uh, ooh, something about Chicago Fire. Uh, audition for Chicago Fire? Please, I've, I've tried. So all the Chicago shows, I it's I'm from Chicago. My family's there. Like I tell them, you don't even have to pay me to live there. I can I got homes to live in. Um, I want to get on. If they created a show called Chicago Mailroom, I would do it. I would be able to be back with my family, doing my favorite thing in the world, which is acting, and I'd be around loved ones in the city that I grew up with. It's a dream come true. Every time they have anything for those shows, I'm I am 110 percent on board. I just have to get the right. I gotta get it. I gotta get the luck. Um. Your voice is so pretty, I can sleep. Wait, wait, I can sleep when you talk. Oh, really? I have a good voice? A good sleep voice? Well, does that mean I'm boring you? Because that's not good. Hopefully I'm not boring you. But thank you for saying my voice is good. Uh, it's 1 a.m. No, 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 where'd that go? Nah. It's 1 a.m. Something about 1 a.m. you're going to bed. Uh, it's 1 a.m. I'm staying up because I love you so much, Ryan. Uh, from... Uh, it went away, but whoever said that, thank you. Go to bed. I, I'm, I promise you guys, I'm going to be doing more of this. I'm gonna, I'm, this is just a test. Again, this is just a test. I'm going to figure out a way to do whether it's on this this site or other ones. I'm going to do more live streaming because I want to get to your questions. I want to. I like interacting with you guys. You guys, your support is the reason why I'm doing this. So please go to bed. Um, yeah, let's see. Do I know any Dutch words? No, I I used to. Uh, nope, I forgot them. I should know them. I, I've been asked that before. Weirdest stream you ever had. Man, so I don't remember my dreams a lot. Like a lot of times, I'm weird. People find this weird when I tell them this. When I go to bed, it's like this. Like that's it's. I don't dream. I know I dream. They say you dream, but I don't remember them. The only way I remember dreams is if I go to bed and wake up early and then go back to bed. And then I remember my dreams like so vividly. But in terms of like, if I go to bed tonight, I will go to sleep. And obviously it's not like instant, but I, I, go, I wake up and nothing has happened. It's really weird, but I kind of don't mind it because when I do remember my dreams, they're weird and I can't control them. And sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. Sometimes people that I don't want in my dreams are there. Like, I kind of like not remembering my dreams. I'm cool with it. <laughs> um, did you see Planet of Monkeys, the recent ones? No, I haven't. Do I need to check that out? Obviously I do, yes. Um, has anyone made a gift based on my family? Um, yeah, so, well, not necessarily, but, you know, I, I don't, like, advertise my family. Yes, dreams are okay, they are, but mine sometimes get weird, and I can't control them, and I don't like when I can't control them. Uh, but my family, I, you know, I don't advertise it. My family's not actors. They're not in the public limelight. You know, I try to keep them away from this, because it is tricky, you know? It's it's not bad, but it's, you know, sometimes I don't, their privacy, just because I'm in the limelight or I'm on a show and I'm doing a live stream, I don't have to force them upon that. It's, if they want to do it, they can if they don't. Um, so my family isn't necessarily known. Some people know. I got one time a, um, from a fan, it wrote, it was the letters of family with 
pictures that they went through my Instagram of my family all throughout, and I thought that was really cool. I still have that. It's um, it's in my room actually. Um, so that was a gift geared towards my family. Um, but yeah, otherwise, you know, I try not to advertise my family too much. Like my mom would never go on camera. Like she's mortified of any of this. Do I believe in time traveling? Not yet. Maybe someday. I'm not gonna say it's not, but. Am I going to be going to WolfCon this year? I hope so. That's, again, based on your guys's, like, you guys have to request, like, want me, and then they have to want me too. There's a lot more to it than just me saying yes. Like, there's a lot of actors on Team Wolf that want to do it. It's just how bad you guys want us and stuff. It's 2.30 a.m. in Italy, but I'm here for you. Thank you so much. Go to bed. I'm going to be ending soon anyway, guys. I've been on for two and a half hours. This was, again, not being paid. This was just a test. I wanted to come and say hi, see how... How you guys would react if maybe live streaming was a thing I could do more. Clearly it is because there's so many questions I didn't get to. I'm so sorry. Um, I can't thank you guys enough for, for man, the, the support you guys. I, this you blew me away. Um, this was awesome. Um, yeah, so I, I wanted to try this, this, uh, this streaming service first. Um, there's a couple others I might try. Otherwise, I might stay with this. But I, I really like being able to talk with you guys, let you guys know I care, continuing to see that you guys care getting answer questions, also keeping you informed on what I'm up to. Um, and then also maybe I, you know, depending on people's schedules, I can get some of the other cats, which would be really cool. Um, I, there's a couple, couple, couple others. I'm not going to say their names yet, but that are, that are interested in doing things like this as well. Um, and we love this stuff. We all, I promise you, this isn't just from me. Everyone on Team Wolf appreciates you guys so much. You guys are the reason we were on Team Wolf. Like you're the reason why we're successful. You're the reason why this is, awesome. I'm not just in a channel by myself talking to myself. I'm talking to you guys. You guys are asking questions. You guys are amazing. Showing love and support. And I can't thank you guys enough. Um, again, this was just a test. I want to do this more. I will keep you guys informed. Um, the, those of you that stayed up late, thank you, thank you, thank you. Those of you that got up early, thank you. Those of you that are just on time, whatever, thank you guys for hanging, chatting. This was awesome. Um, I, there will be more of this. So... So, so stay in touch. Keep, keep checking up on me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this and we're going to do this again. Um, but yes, you guys are unbelievable. Can't thank you guys enough. Go home. Whatever you're doing, it's the weekend. Get sleep. Go eat. Go be with loved ones. Go see a movie. I'm going to check out some of the things you guys told me to check out. And thank you, thank you, thank you guys. All right, take it easy.